Thank God. Yeah, thank God for Amazon. Thank God for Amazon, DoorDash, and all the other delivery services. Because God exactly. damn, but you know those probably about to go up too. Well, they already have. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Gas. Yeah, I think they get uh, gas. It is slower now. That's why the trucking mm-hmm. industry is a little slow. All that, like everything, is a little bit more expensive. That's why people. That's why a lot of logistics companies are struggling because they're trying to still get forth that same output but they're spending more oh they got more overhead now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. gotta put it for that fuel babe yeah man. well i'm gonna be <clears throat> way to housing market and uh um gas prices looking it's feeling like 2008 a little bit yeah hey, i just about to say that all like motherfuckers that like this ain't never happened before yeah, it's but like two. It's, a hard, it's, 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 it's hitting a little different because you got a lot of motherfuckers who want the age to remember that's hitting. You feel me? And them motherfuckers won't build for that type of shit. Yeah, yes, oh my God. Yeah, guys. That makes five goddamn dollars a gallon. Better lend it where you go, goddamn. Necessity. Yep. And I think the highest it went then was like 520 or something like that. It was at least four ninety nine. It was at least four ninety nine. That shit, that's just ridiculous. Five dollars down here before, like when we first moved down here in 08, it was up there in the five dollars. Like the deepest part of the recession, that shit was horrible. Tell me about it, boy. You know, the good part about it is, man, this financial market, this shit is cyclical, so. If you can ride the wave out, if you're a smart person, as this shit goes down, when it gets to the, when the little bubbles break, the smartest people start to make the investments and make the moves that make the money. Like the smartest oh, yeah. people make money in the calamity time. So like, I'm already thinking of like, well, what do I need to do as far as like the podcast, as far as like my actual real life, as far as investments and shit, I've already started like looking into like, changing up my stock portfolio and all of that shit to like mm-hmm. yeah like match the time i'm gonna t- i'm gonna tell you who 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 to start reading up on if you get a chance to get the audio book or the regular book of uh warren buffett and his auto mm-hmm. or any any book that he's written really but him yeah i looked at uh, the interviews with yeah he just just you know just just study him like when you study dude like that Cause like Elon and them, they, they more like they made their money off of a service or a product. So they real good at understanding those things, but the financial yep. piece is more of a byproduct of their. Mm-hmm. Uh, of what they've been doing. Warren yeah. Buffett, he made his money off making money. So when you, when you get it, like when you start studying like the financial experts, like you see like this shit, you know, <laughs> at, the way, at the bottom of the way we cash out and we find a way to, mm-hmm to build upon so that as the next bubble starts to build, your money starts and to that's build. another thing. That's another thing motivated me was that behind that cannabis shit because I'm looking at I was recently looking at the um the revenue of places who had legal cannabis when the when the pandemic came in, once everybody got shut in, that revenue shot up. So the tax revenue from that alone shot up and supported a lot of a lot of communities because motherfuckers were shut in, but you still had delivery business and businesses that were delivering that specific product to motherfuckers. The motherfuckers ain't had nothing to do with sitting in the house and they were just doing that and doing that and doing that. And I'm looking at, okay, shit being legal on a more wider scale is gonna be more of a doing that. And just what people sad to say or just just I ain't even sad to say on a business aspect, when shit get bad, people get high and get drunk. You feel me? Just to just just knowing people and just psychotic people. When people get when shit get bad for people, they want to escape. They want something else. So shit legal, they gonna go to that. And if you got it, you gonna make the money. If we see on motherfucking West Coast with motherfucking states is bringing big double 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 figure billions just in tax revenue alone from one thing, yeah, damn. I, I wanna be a part. I wanna I wanna be a part of that. I, I want to have a lot a lot of that. You know I, mean? I, I I wanna have some of that revenue coming my way, especially. If it's gonna come and be sustainable, that's that's the thing to have sustainable revenue in times of need. 
that's that's what I wonder about. Like, mm. I know in states when they first open up, like it's it's a lot of money to be made. But over the long haul, I wonder like. Oh, they still making money. They, motherfuckers are still like Colorado. I right, Colorado when it came out, Colorado was, I think, had in the fifties as far as billions of revenue. I think last year they still had probably like between thirty and forty-five billion dollars in their in their tax revenue from that. You know what I mean? So, as I'm seeing it from my research, I'm doing it just from what I'm seeing, and states that have there has been legal longer. The the longer the legality of it, the less black market you have, because it it it's no need because you have the dispensaries that almost everywhere, this uh, they're flooding the market with it almost. So I don't need a black market dealer if I can go to I can walk down the block to my dispensary and get it for damn it for the same price. You feel me? So it's, it's drawing that out. So it's more revenue being put back into the economy where. And places where okay, it's just now it's just not legal. People really don't know the law, and they still go on the black market. People that tax, there ain't no tax revenue on that, so that money is going straight back into whatever you want to put it into. But what is going right back in the tax revenue, right back in the government, that money counted. You can see that. You can see that. You feel me? So I'm saying that on the long run, it may be a slow dwindle down, but that's in every. I see that in every industry, just like with the automotive industry, it had a big ass start, but it fluctuates. So I'm saying with the cannabis, I'm I see in the long run that's just gonna keep keep making money, keep making money because I don't see nobody not using it with in all innovation. Personally, I'm eventually want to go from the inhalation to just pure ingestion. Ingestion. I want to stop mm-hmm. smoking and stop promoting smoking it and just go to everything just ingested because that's the healthiest way. Gummies, drinks, the, and all infused foods. Because if I ever get a brick and mortar store, that's what I want my brick and mortar to be. Just everything, the healthy version of it. No smoking because it, regardless of what you smoke, cannabis or tobacco, that still smoke one in your lungs, inhibiting some function of it. But the purest, most good way to eat that shit it may take a little bit longer, but the effects are that much more potent to you, and it's that much more healthy. So I want to eventually get a break. That's my 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 end game, my my dream shit. I want to do with cannabis. I want them and and the uh, ingestion store. Where I can promote the healthy shit, give the healthy shit, educate motherfuckers, and still do the same shit I'm doing now with with cannabis, just not smoking. You know? What I was more talking about is not the tax revenue that the state gets, is like mm-hmm. if you're a mom and pop that opens up as this influx of a bunch of new people are now trying to sell weed and weed products because it's all of a sudden legal. For the first couple. Well, of years. Well, okay, go ahead. Well, from what I see, the the, the mom and pop stores, they, I gonna say, struggle to get in the market because of. You know, uh, I ain't finished my point yet, not one time yet, though, right? I ain't even get to say this. <laughs> so you keep asking me, but I'm not. I haven't finished saying it, so I just want to make sure at least when it's I. My bad, brother. Go right ahead. You <laughs> shut me up. Go right ahead. Right when you're right, you're right. When you're right, uh, you're right. Go ahead. So what I was saying was look when I'm talking about like the longevity, like in, in the industry, like you brought up the automobile industry, there's like five automobile companies that make all of the automobiles that we buy now. If you're a mom and pop shop, you pretty much have been bought out of the market. Shut out. If you look at retail, there's like five major retail companies that own all the stores that you go to. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like when I look at cannabis, I look at a state like California. I don't, I ain't done all the research. So that's why I'm about to make this point and then let you go. But when I look at a state like California, when they first got legal, it was a bunch of people making money. Then over time, it became where like you have these established companies that are making money, like your cookies, like your whatever, like your chain dispensaries that are like, they're established there. They're, they're almost like the Walmarts of dispensaries over there. Mm-hmm. But the average corner store just independently owned. A lot of those either switch their hustle to something else in the cannabis industry or something. So I'm just looking at like the longevity, like what I wonder what the cannabis industry is going to end up doing as more and more states get legal to like allow that person that just was the, that wants to stay the individual shop 
to not become like a like a Sam Goodies like like a record store ended up doing when the when the Sam Goodies and the Peaches had bought out. Everything. Yeah, you couldn't go to <clears throat> on no mom and pop. It was just the big ones. If you was a mom and pop, you won't make no money. Same thing with a lot of restaurants and shit. That's why the restaurant business is so hard unless you're a franchisee. Like. How, what stops it from becoming where like it's just like all right you got these four five cannabis dispensary brands and they the ones that run everything and now you can't like get shut out over the long haul like at the beginning it's kind of easy for everybody to kind of jump in and make that quick money but like say you're a person that like okay. i may not necessarily want to become a billionaire but i may want to make like a flat one million a year off my dispensary and i don't want to get no bigger necessarily i just want to be able to sustain this and keep my little clientele what stops like i wonder what cannabis industry is going to end up setting up to like combat like that monopoly type mindset well bro just my viewpoint on it i see it as hold up Well, I see that like in those scenarios, I see it just like in any other business when you have a, a, a company with the revenue to get the mass amount of stock in, they're driving the local competitors out. You got to find either a niche market or just use your ingenuity to figure out what you do. So like I say, like if you look at people like places like um, say the bird, where you had Walmart come in, but you had places like Harrison's and Young Supermarket and places like that was with a neighborhood and a small neighborhood group who couldn't travel and get to the big places that were surviving off those, some of them closed down because they still couldn't compete. But because of, what's the word I'm looking for? Because of um, customer loyalty, that's one thing. Customer loyalty, you have people that don't, don't go out of the neighborhood just to go to those grocery stores, you feel me? So shit like that would help, but with any industry, you gonna have those majors. That's the one thing we, we face, the people in the cannabis industry facing now, you got the $10,000 to be able to get into the industry in some states. Not no average mom and pop got $10,000 to put out out front. They get the, they get the basic stuff they need, basic licenses they need to even apply because you gotta put that $10,000 down before you even really get your license. That gotta be paid with your application fee. So if you don't get you don't get the license, fucking $10,000, you feel me? I mean? so, I mean, like, the industry has a long way to go and a lot of parameters are set up. Um, as far as getting the money on a long scale, like I said, I see everybody being able to get in, but they're going to have to put someone in, in, in scope so people like Big Pharma don't get in and take all the money because they even, it's time to start it now. So people like, I don't know his name, but this is a black, this is a, this is a black couple that's doing marijuana. They, they got their own dispensary. I forgot what state it's in, but it's a majority black state. It ain't Georgia. And they, I'm not going to say they're competing with the big people, but they own their own. They they spoke on their troubles, they have them, and they've got the dispensary, but they've only also got their own brand of brand of line of products. You know, and that's what's been helping them stay afloat because they got their name and they branded their own shit. So as technology moves forward, you're going to see more people coming out with different strands and trying to put their name on shit because that's how you'll stay afloat. <laughs> like if you look at Steph, the dude, Big Baby, um, Brian Heavy said, dude, with the braids, the dreads, and shit. He got his, he started his own strand of weed, um, Big Baby Bud, something like that. So, just something like that, like Urkel did, the Purple Urkel, having your strand out there will give you revenue coming back in. And I see a lot of people probably gonna move towards that. It'll take a little bit more in, in the technology field and in a little in, in your pocket, but on the long run, it's that much more beneficial for you. Like, if you wanna get the mom and pop store, that's good because they're always needed and they will be needed everywhere. Because people like me out in, out in the sticks in the country, am I going to drive an hour to the city to go to a dispensary or am I going to feel more comfortable going somewhere local? Somebody going to open up something local if they're smart. If not, you feel me? Got it. Mm -hmm. Last uh, question before we get into the actual show proper. Uh, what do you see as the Nate's like frontier of cannabis products like? some point you know what i'm saying people got bored with the buds and everybody had their own strain of buds so then people started to get into more of the extracts and now it's more of the edibles and the topical creams and stuff like that what's the next thing or what do you feel like is the next frontier or what are you seeing is like i need to get on this early because if not it's going to become as saturated like the rest of these different products and services <laughs> See, 
herbal tea, like cannabis tea and drinks like that. Shit like is more mobile shit. Anything like that. The the health kick. Because as you see in every industry, that, that health kick, that's the big wave. And that's the long-lasting wave. Because anything you get in health is going to last. Because everybody wants to be healthy. They want to do everything the healthy way. So like I said, the healthiest thing to do is to ingest marijuana, not inhale it. So everybody who smokes it, dance or whatever, you get in, you get in your, you do what you do, but it's not the healthiest way for you to do it. So once everybody switched their mind to, oh, I can get it, I can get it, and I can do it, to now let me do it. The, the healthiest way for me to do it is to get my good effects. I think those type of products are going to be that next wave, that, that good health kit. Um, like I said, teas, because I make my, I can, you can brew your own tea at home. Recipes online, I brew my own tea at home, and I don't have to smoke. I can sit there, smoke a cup, drink a cup of tea, and watch a movie and be the same, have the same effects. 30 minutes later, I'm I'm good, you feel me? Because I'm just sitting with my cup of tea, and I can sit there and sit as long as I want to. Put a little bit of sugar if I want to. Don't have to put no sugar in the orange. Depends on how you like your tea and shit. Um, well, yeah, like I say, that, that health wave, I see that be the next, that, that next level of, like, cannabis shit, especially for all longevity. But wow. me personally, I want to, I want to develop my own. I want, I would love to get my own brand of teas or get with somebody to get a line of teas because I love tea as it is anyway, and I drink tea like 15 times a day. So regardless if it's cannabis tea or herbal tea, I love tea. So do I'm you ever think it or get into like uh, subdermals and injectables or like time release type stuff where like you put it in you and then it like releases over like a month, like? I guess kind of like they do with like actual medication. Like, do you ever see it getting to that level where like you um, get your, your weed implant and that shit, your well, implant and that shit like last for a month? With the state of what they're doing, with the state of what they're doing with just psychedelics alone and they're trying to push psychedelics and the, the health benefits of that, I can see them doing that with cannabis, like forming into like more of a medic more of a medicated state and trying to do shit like that because they're seeing most of the health benefits of it. But I don't think they would have to set the same parameters or, or same thing they do with certain medications to cannabis. Uh because some of these medications we don't know why they work, but they work. So uh like time release and shit like that because of the chemicals in the medication you would have to do that with cannabis. I don't think you would have to do that unless it's like well, I knew this old dude, he had some type of liver liver problem. He didn't have a little cancer, but he had a liver problem. And all the medications he took were toxic to him. But they prescribed him an actual, before medical marijuana came big like that, back when um I had first moved out to the 75, and I saw him doing my thing. They, um, his doctor had prescribed him a TACP. Like, he would take that, you know, like, give him the, the experience of him smoking, like, a half. Yeah. And it was so strong. So he was like, I can't take this because it, it has it, it's too strong. So he was just still smoke regular marijuana to get the effects he needed because what they were prescribing him was too strong. So I think them trying to prescribe marijuana in like pill forms or some form like that, they're not gonna actually know how to do it no time soon. You're gonna have to dibble and dabble in the in the medicine industry to know, okay, this amount of marijuana or this amount of marijuana extract for this you're feeling right now will be good and this amount of while I take this out like I think it's like more people like me who self medicate and shit like that. I I I, I, I smoke this shit and I be all right like in the hour shoot. I'll be all right. I ain't gonna do this, this, this and smoke another one. So like but that's I'm a smoker. So going into the medical industry with it is gonna be a different different shit. But I don't see there's no time relief. I definitely don't see that working just from me seeing the potency of the medicine they had. 10 years ago, maybe now with medicine developing more and more advanced in the a, a field, they got shit better. But back then, the shit they were giving out people for, the, the few things they were giving out was kicking people ass. They didn't they didn't want to take it. They didn't get people, oh, cool, cool, I want this feeling. But most people don't want that type of feeling. It's like one of feel like you ever smoke too much, you're like, oh, my God, I, I don't want to be out of it. Don't nobody want that feeling. Right on. Well, good high talk. And speaking of being up, what's up, guys? Welcome to the what's podcast. Hey. A show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I'm one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, and I'm along with. Mr. Padawan here, back in Virginia, 
And don't worry, the mic is working right this time. This time, I don't have to worry about getting close to the mic so you can actually hear what the fuck I'm saying because I did hear that last episode. But enough of this intro. Yeah, it's the Padawan. I'm one third and I'm along with. What's happening, man? It's your boy facing the place somewhere in the middle of this race, but I'm carrying my big ass mace. Ready to hit somebody in the face. What's happening this week, man? Damn, I didn't have a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gotta be an old head on the pod part to get that one but uh yeah man what's up guys welcome back um i don't know if y'all can hear it in my background but it is thundering and lightning like it is a horrible storm going on like right outside of my studio slash garage so uh if you hear some <laughs> thunder that ain't my thumb that ain't my stomach growling or nothing that is a uh, hurricane whatever the fuck this is out here i don't know where this came from it just came out of nowhere but yeah it's, um, okay. it's been raining it's raining all along the coast yes man how y'all doing this week though man uh pat like you said you're back in uh va from your atl trip how, how was your experience uh what, what are you bringing back to va with you i don't know what to um, do for you uh a, a lot of mental health a lot of mental health being relieved it was it felt good that i didn't have to worry about work the next day i can properly enjoy myself and i had to worry about all right i can't get too fucked up because i have to work in two days or some shit like that you know what i'm saying that and networking meeting a lot of people um i don't know if i told y'all but yeah um hang out with lily um one of our homies is Jay Stone, which is an artist under Nipsey or mm-hmm. whatever. And I've been, I was chilling with him for a good couple of days. I mean, I, I kind of wanted to do some content with him, but at the same time, I didn't want to like disrespect him because I know it's like with, with artists or whatever, I know there's a lot of people coming around all the time just trying to take that opportunity or whatever from him or whatever. But he was good right. Yeah, yeah. Lucky I won't dare. I damn showed him like, hey, brother, I have a podcast. Would you like uh, mind doing a drop or something? Mm-hmm. Closed mouth don't get fed in this industry, boy. I know. But it, it was it was cool. It was a lot of, um, I don't know. I got a lot of financial advice from random business guys yeah, or whatever. Right. Yeah, as far as like building credit and things like that or whatever. It was real cool. I had a real bougie ass time out there. I was eating duck and salmon and shit. And that's something I don't normally do. <laughs> Boy, that shit's still killing me, man. <laughs> so tilapia is a delicacy, nigga. <laughs> no, tilapia is not a delicacy, salmon nigga. It ain't a delicacy. I just never had, like, I never been it's a salmon at Walmart, nigga. nigga. I know, but I just never been a seafood nigga. And then it was like the way they prepared it, it was real fancy. It was like a Hennessy glaze salmon. Did I say it at night? I always got to catch how I say it because some people say salmon. Some people say salmon. I don't know what to say. <laughs> God bless you. That, God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Boy. Y'all know I'm simple. It don't take much. Boy, I must be fucking rich then, boy. I must. I didn't realize I was a billionaire on the low because I eat fucking lobster and shit. I, I didn't know that I was just living lavish. Nigga, I have salmon on a Wednesday. We get that shit. Did you live lavish, nigga? Get 25, <laughs> like 20 fillets in the bag. Yeah, you know what it you is. made me feel good by myself, yeah. shit. Boosting my ego a little bit. Shit, wait till I tell the wife, God damn it, we fancy. Poop, we fancy. We out here didn't know. Well, Miss Poop fancy real. anyway, so. Shit, I'm going to get salmon more often now. You'd have made me feel like it's a king's meal. Like, I'm about to be up and be like, yeah, nigga. And, salmon tonight. And I think it's the places. It was, it was the places we were eating at or whatever. They were real yeah, nice looking. Not that bad. Inside. <laughs> Or whatever, so you do often pay for the estate, yeah. mm. but it was real cool. I, I was felt at home, like, as soon as I came back, everything just seems like I don't know, it just went into play. Well, I'm back. <laughs> Told you, you need to move on down here. 
I'm working on it. That's what I was doing all that networking for. I knew somebody now that works for like a Wells Fargo bank and everything. So I'm to try and keep in contact with them. And yes. go from there. Because I've been applying. Coming soon. Pat living in Atlanta. The big <laughs> working on it we are working on it yeah but otherwise how you doing champ everything good everything's good got me a little call but that's all right i got all the meds i need right here sickly child god bless you you need one of them injectable one of them weed pills uh face was talking about no yeah man people bring the kids around me and shit i'm something to stick with you for 24 hours man Mm mm-hmm I don't know, man. It's like everybody, if somebody gets sick around me, then it goes right to me and this shit. And I'm like, ugh, man, I didn't want that. Marley's moms get that immune boost in between. There you go. Eat your fruits and vegetables. Oh. Eat, eat some eat, eat some vegetables. Yeah, I, That's what I actually uh, like. I actually ordered some more from Marley. Vegetables I actually too, ordered some you more. You can't just eat Seymour. You got to eat some vegetables. Oh, yeah. You need some real iron and shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Some, some potassium. Some carbs and protein. Some good shit in your opinion. I'm telling you. You can't just be eating that chicken sandwich and shit. You got to eat some real food. Yeah, be eating chicken sandwiches, chicken sandwiches. Yeah, chicken sandwiches. We, ain't, we ain't getting no younger boss. I'd like to be potting with not- you uh, when we 90. You know, can't good. Can't get that chicken sandwich. No, that's true. Man can't live off bread alone or chicken alone. Better get you some more that bougie bougie seafood. Get you the omega three fatty acids. You said what? What is called? Omega three fatty acids. That's what you get from. Oh. Especially oh, omega three, uh, especially uh, fatty fishes like two of them. You say fatty asses? <laughs> no, <man. laughs> no, I was like, like, wait a minute, do nothing for your health. I mean, they might, you know, make you feel feel good today, but they like a burger, mm-hmm. they make you feel good, but they ain't really do nothing oh, for yeah, you. Yeah. Fatty <laughs> no, damn, I'm talking about <laughs> <the health food. laughs> at first. I thought he said fatty asses and asses. And I was like, no, nah, he ain't say asses. He said acid. I know he said fatty asses. I, ain't, I, ain't I know it. it. Not, not yet. I ain't there yet. <laughs> ain't there yet. <laughs> uh, but how you be, Face? Shit. I can't complain, but a little inebriated. Well, that's, that sounds about par for the course. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, I'm brand. Yeah. yeah. Ready to get back to my creative state of mind. That's all I'm trying to get... Try to get my mind back right so I can get back creative. I ain't created shit in the store in a while. I ain't put no new shit out, no new creative shit. So I want to get back to that, trying to get my mind to that type of space. So gotcha. that's about it. What I'm trying, that's what's going on with me, trying to do that. Uh, you got to get your um, views. Yeah, so I'm going to get some, but life gets in the way sometimes, but that is what it is. But yeah, yeah I want to get back to that shit. Right. Yeah. Taxes keep taxing, deaths keep deathing, niggas keep nigging, and life keep oh, yeah. oh yeah, damn right. But shit, no crackers keep track. cracking. <laughs> this week I wanted to bring to the table, like I think we touched on this um conversation on this topic uh one ago or something. I think we touched on, but we ain't really going in depth. We spoke on our own personal preferences, but I was watching um uh, forgot what podcast I was watching recently. And they went deaf on it. They had um, it was my expert opinion. They had um, Remy Ma come on. They was discussing the poly thing because of the um, the poly lifestyle and their own personal opinions and just went over. So I just want to bring it back. Just go on and do it on a different on a just different question on it. Like we we discussed why we wouldn't or why we would, but outside of personal, just want to talk about it as far as this on a society scale. What's going on? Like why is it becoming more relevant, more prevalent? We see it. So um, first question, um, I'm going to give y'all the questions first, and then I'm going to just give, give it to y'all for y'all to free y'all. Free y'all on. We'll knock it so, down, um, baby. We podding tonight. Already. So um, first thing, men and women, uh, this is the, men and women are starting to embrace the party lifestyle more. Why do y'all think? Um, second thing, is this a new relationship structure for the future? Do y'all see this being 
um, more widely accepted, just on not just in America, but everywhere. Um, what positive and negatives come from this type of lifestyle? And uh, last two, you know, the, can a man can a man and woman both operate equally in this setup? Uh, for example, one man with two women, or one woman with two men. I mean, either one married, like so, one man married to two women, or one woman married to two men. In that in that scenario. And lastly, if your partner approached you with the idea of bringing somebody else into the relationship, either another man or another woman, on a long term basis, how would you react? Okay, so that's feel, a, that's feel a free to ask. Feel, feel free to ask. Yeah, feel free. Feel free to <laughs> ask about the questions that I repeat them. Uh, I'll just start with the first one you said, which is um, I think was why it is you think that that lifestyle is becoming more prevalent recently. Um, I think it's a couple of reasons. Um, I think reason number one is you have you have an inevitability of an endpoint. So men and women have kind of since modern society was set up and we begin to follow a more monogamous type of society, you've had this kind of tug of war with people cheating, it becoming a negative thing. And over time, more and more ways of cheating have become more and more okay. Now that now we get to 2022 where like it's like everybody's kind of on this new wave of hot girl summer, hot boy. We 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 out here just the bag is more important than anything. It's easier now at this point to like just kind of throw your hands and be like, all right, people gonna cheat anyway. How do we now flip this to a beneficial way? So I think it's more just like an inevitability of just like over time, we were going to get here again, because this is kind of where we started from. When you look at original villages and village mindset back in the day, you had kings with multiple wives. You would have uh, empresses with, you know, male concubines, et cetera. You know, it was a thing for reproductive benefits and for bloodline uh, assertions when it came to going up and to be kings and queens and all that shit. So we were going to get back here eventually. But then, too, I think that there is a generation of people who are rebelling. It's almost like the counterculture is becoming the norm. So there's a generation of people who kind of are rebelling against the norm of everything. And they're looking at a world where gender norms are being redefined, gender roles are being redefined, um, sexuality is being explored again. It's kind of like the 60s revolution where you saw a bunch of different new ideas kind of popping up. They weren't necessarily new ideas, but they were ideas that had been taboo that were now like, all right, it's cool. Go ahead, women, don't wear your bra. Go ahead, men, you know, like free love. Go ahead and have sex with who you want to have sex with. It ain't got to be so stifling no more. This Victorian, age. you know what I mean? So it's like, I think we're in one of those renaissances of sex and just people are exploring who they are at a high rate. And a part of that is people kind of looking at the divorce rates going up and new, the, the loss of the nuclear family anyway. So if that's already a thing that's not a norm anymore, then what is the new norm? Do we have to have a new norm? Is it okay to be poly? So I think it's just like you got a generation of people that's open to anything and polyamory in a lot of ways fits this generation's dynamic of they want the bag and they're already susceptible to being open to a new lifestyle because they're kind of growing up in that generation of almost like a counterculture thing of let's go against the normal lifestyles we've been dealing with. That's my opinion on that. And you ask hella questions, but as far as that first question, that's my take on that. Pat. Okay. I got a I got a different take. Give yeah. whatever. Now I agree with everything Ted says. Also, I also mm -hmm. think into the part of it of uh, the economy and the economic factor of it because all right, when most people think of this poly stuff, they think of polygamy, not polyamory, which is polygamy mm -hmm. is like 
having sex with multiple people and them not knowing that you're having sex with multiple people or oh, no that like that's cheap. not necessary or whatever Poly- but i mean well polygamy polygamy is- polygamy. Oh, go ahead faith break that shit go ahead, go ahead faith. Go ahead, now i was just gonna say polyamory just means you can be in love with multiple people people and, and yeah. everybody in that group is kind of in a relationship with each other. Polygamy yeah. is multiple people being in a relationship with one person. So like the situation mm. D. Ray Davis got, that's polygamy. That's okay. multiple girls are in a relationship with him, but that don't necessarily mean they're in a relationship with each other. Polyamory means Janet, Lisa, and Steve are all dating each other. So Lisa and, and Janet are dating each other. Steve and Lisa mm. are dating each other. Janet, like everybody's dating each other and they're all in love with each other. That's a different dynamic, similar setup. Still, you know, mm. three or more people, but it's just a different setup as far as the dynamic between the different players. Mm. But the key to both of those that I do want to assert is like, the key to both of those situations is that all parties are aware of the situation as opposed to like the key to cheating is that one party doesn't know what the other party is doing. So basically polygamy is one person with multiple partners, but they all know each other and polyamory is everybody gets a chance. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Very on the, very similar, but I I, I kind of get where you were going. Go ahead and finish your, your overall point because I think your overall point still will be on point. Yeah, because I, I would say, all right, all right, polygamy is a chance for guys to do whatever random uh-huh. fantasy that they have. Polyamory is more, when I look at that, it looks like y'all all are living in a house and have like a community within that house or whatever, and y'all all pitching in to live in that house, which in this state of the economy, that might work out or whatever. I'm just putting in another, I'm not saying this is the main factor of that. I'm just saying that is a factor that that can come into line. If you got multiple people in the house, that's multiple income. Hell yeah, that is a key factor. You're right on that. A lot of people are into this economic empowerment thing and they're looking at like, all right, me and wifey struggle, but if we add another person to this mix, mm-hmm. now we're we're basically going from lower middle class to upper middle class overnight. And now we can kind of all reach our destination a little quicker. So a mm-hmm. lot of people are looking at it for that economic mobility piece. So you 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 spot on with that shit. And not to not to jump around, but like the I would say the the positives. Well, I already said the positives of that is, you know, the the economic factor. But at the same time, um, let's say you have the children here. You always have somebody there to take care of the kids while somebody else is working. You know, things like that. There's things, you know, things like that you could work around or whatever when there's multiple adults living in the home or whatever. The negative is you're living with multiple adults. So you got to figure out where where are y'all going to kumbaya at, so to speak? Like, you know, when you have multiple people living in a house or whatever, you know, one person might not be a morning person. The other person might be a morning person. And, you know, and some people might be going to sleep in on Saturday. Some people want to start their day off on Saturday, blast music and cleaning. You know, those those type of things. But that's like hey, the only I other thing. I got negative. the official meaning because we want to make sure we actually correct. So... Mm-hmm. You got three different words that people all kind of use interchangeably. It it don't mean the same thing. So we're going to make sure we all correct. So that way, as we continue this discussion, we not looking crazy. But uh, mm-hmm. polyamory just means multiple love. So anytime you got multiple people who all love each other and are in a relationship together, you got polyamory. Polygamy mm-hmm. means multiple spouses. So that's when you have multiple people that are actually married. So a man with two wives, a woman with two husbands, that type of situation. Now they're actually married. It's, a, it's more of a formal legal situation. Polygyny mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. 
is when one man marries multiple women. So the, the thing that we most of the time hear talking about or that we see when we're talking about black men, especially is polygyny that they're advocating for. They're usually scared of polyamory or the polygamy piece. They're usually looking at polygyny or maybe taking their polygynous relationship into turning it into polygamy. But so polyamory, they don't usually reach that level. So the the difference between Go ahead. Uh, I got poly- polygyny, polygyny and polygamy. With N, polygyny with the mm-hmm. N is a man with two women specifically. Polygamy mm-hmm. just means multiple spouses. So that could be a woman with two husbands or a man with two women. Oh, combination. Okay. So there's multiple people married to each other. Polygamy yeah, is polygamy is, is like polygyny I'm a man with two women and I'm married. Mm-hmm. But that's what okay. both men are trying to shoot for. But when you look at polyamory, that can be any combination. When you look at overall polygamy, that can be any combination. Polygyny okay. is kind of polygamy, but society will accept polygamy. There you go. There you mm-hmm. go. That's, that's where it comes to that, the other question. Will women, all right, women accepted will be seen. Polyamory is um, scary. Them, can they operate equally? And in society, I don't see the the polygamy and polygyny seen the same, seen equally, or being able to operate equally. I don't know. I, I think we. I, I think it comes down to where we're going, and and I think it we're at a crux in society where it can get there at some point if we keep going on the trend we on now, whereas society is becoming more and more open to different lifestyles and the like, oh, yeah. uh, the old guard who are kind of like standoffish to any change is kind of still there. So we can get there. But as far as right now, I think the issue is we are a, we're still a Christian based country overall, mm-hmm. which means that there's still a large portion of the populace that believes in traditional marriage man and woman and that's kind of where they're they're going to stay there are christians like myself who believe that you can be a christian and still that like it's not as strict to the Mm -hmm. the literal interpretation of the bible as a lot of people do so i think you know as we continue to progress as people in this country we can get there but the thing that holds us back is is the religion based part of our makeup is so many people that are like staunch Catholics and Christians that it's like it's hard for them to get to a point that it, it to them ideas like even polygyny is already mm-hmm. like what the hell. Mm-hmm. Like they look at Mormons and their way of having like multiple wives as like crazy. You see what I'm saying? So like when you have such a large sect, we got to kind of wait to that large section kind of progresses. But I think it's possible, but it, it's really a lot of based on ego too. Like the average mm-hmm. man in America don't got the ego to deal with his woman dealing with another man and he'd be okay with it. Like even in, even if in his mind, he sees the benefit as far as the cost ratio and like the the fact that all right, this other man may make six figures and I'm sitting here working at Pep Boys at the front counter making 40 grand. I could use this dude and then we could be on. All I gotta do is get past my ego or the fact that there's another man who may actually have sex with my wife. There's another man knocking your wife back out and on Thursday because your day, your day is one It takes a different type of dude to be able to do that. And most men, myself included, are not there. There's a lot of women. The reason that the average man ain't polygynist. There's a lot of women who ain't there yet, who ain't gonna take mm-hmm. their man, who are not okay with their man. Like even if they're okay with the fact that knowing that their man is going to cheat, they don't want to know that bitch. They don't want to know about that bitch. They don't want nothing about that side woman to infiltrate their actual day to day life. So, like, it takes as long a as you don't have a looking stupid security thing. and like being okay with even though this is happening, I'm still good. It takes security and it takes even being open to be able to build a relationship with this other person where y'all are that cool for this to be okay because y'all got to get along for it to work. It don't work exactly. if y'all both good with her and y'all know about each other, but y'all still pissed at each other <clears throat> and y'all walking around the house making it uncomfortable. 
Like, so like, I think it, it can happen if we as a society get to a more secure place. And I think we're getting there as more people are open to be themselves. Like that comes with the level of security. Like uh, uh, most secure people that I know, it comes from a level of them really knowing who they are and being okay with the darkest, ugliest parts of them and the good. We can get mm-hmm. there. But a lot of old mentalities got to move the fuck out of the way. And that's the same thing with a lot of things. It's kind of like racism and other shit. Like we're getting there, but it's where the weird crux where that old guard is fighting back like hell. For what? I don't know, because they're not even going to be here for a while. And it's none of their goddamn business. And all we're doing is just slaving so they can have a better retirement and shit. Get your old ass out of the damn. But I don't think it'll ever be a norm. I think it'll get to a place where people will tolerate it and be okay with it. It'll kind of be like that's that's all other parts of life where like we cool with it. <clears throat> it happens, but I don't think it'll be a norm for women to get multiples just because men are always going to revert back to their instinct at some point and be territorial. Like women are territorial, yes, but women are also more about the territory of the home. So if two women can get together and make the home still feel like both of their home, they cool. It's more about the nesting for them. For us, it's more about the actual property. It's more about the tangible thing. Like two women are sharing a house. Dudes are sharing a house to a certain level, but if one of them starts to get a little more hierarchy, then it's going to automatically create a dynamic shift that unless you have a one of them being a beta at some point they gonna end up getting their own shit women will live together for for years and just be best friends and just be happy with it and don't care about nothing mm-hmm. just happy one of them be rich the other one be poor and they be just fine like it's not as much assertion of dominance with women men as soon as that woman scream out in a way for that nigga that she didn't for you Two dudes about to bump heads. That day, mm-hmm. that whole beautiful union that everybody got together and we signed up for it and we said we was ready, that whole union done. And that's that's just, we ain't secure enough as men. Men, men don't have that chip all the way, which is why you, you see throughout history, even though we have examples of people like Queen Sheba and other great empresses and queens who like had their male concubine that wasn't the norm the dominant th- story throughout history is men doing it just because men are more that that's our gear when they, th- we say women are catty but men are way more like on a big level on a day-to-day women can have a better relationship and can communicate with each other way better which is why women will be catty as fuck will still be best friends with that same girl that she called a bit. 30 years down the line and niggas will fall out over a woman immediately. Men, women will sit there and team up on the nigga that they both was fucking around with. Like, it's just a different mentality. It's a different way we're wired biologically that makes us like want to like hunt. And this is mine. It's, it's the animal kingdom. Like you ain't gonna see, you will see 13 lionesses hanging out with one lion. You don't see 15 lions hanging out with one lion. Because 14 of them motherfuckers going to get eaten. It's going to be me in this one. You want you me, All of us ain't going to help. 14 of y'all got to go. Or mm. I've got to go find me my own line. It's because this ain't going to work. So it's just, it's, just, it's just that thing. You know what I mean? So I think it'll get to a place where it can get tolerated. And I think that you will see more of it where it become like where it's not like, oh, that's weird. But I don't think it was from the overall societal norm for women to have that same privilege the same way. Like, it, it's just, it, it's not right necessarily, but there's not going to be enough men to fulfill the quota for women to do it. Like, we're already looking at a population where women outnumber us. So it's already it's exactly. set up like, you're struggling to get one of us. You want two? That's going to be hard, man. I, I don't mm-hmm. do no harm, and I... I'm not against you having two. If that if you find two dudes that's down with it, that's your. I'm. I actually think it works. Like whatever dynamic works for you to have a healthy relationship and build up healthy children in a healthy environment. I'm cool with it. But it's gonna be hard for you to find them two dudes on a regular basis, women. I'm be just. So if y'all are thinking that y'all about to get that, ugh. Ugh. I- I think my um, wife ain't gonna get to the point where I'm gonna be polygynous or she like 
me and her will never get there. And I feel like me and her are probably a good example of like progressive communication and like how to keep building your communication. Like I feel like we do a good job of it, but I don't <clears> see us ever getting to a point where like we look at each other and like I can share you. You can have male friends. I can have female friends. We can hang out. But as soon as it crosses a level of intimacy or you like them or I like her, well, that's the end of that. Cut that shit off. Mm -hmm. It ain't even going to get that close. Like, do we, like, I, so, like, I just, the average person that are in these healthy relationships, monogamous, <laughs> like, I don't think the average group, like, most of the people I know that are either swingers or whatever, it ain't like they they stay with them people long term. It's like, all right, we go fuck around with these folk and then we go on back to back. It's a short term experience and then they leave. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like it may become, yeah. I, I, it may become a norm where a woman can get ran trained no more. But to, where, you know, two dudes be willing to have sex with one woman more or something like that. Yeah, it's it's but as far as like it getting to a place where it's commonplace for like, yeah, I don't see that. Not with men. Unless you find bisexual men, in which case you have a higher likeness. In that community, you may, because then you, you know what I think? Men that are more like, you know what I think? To, they're a little more secure in dealing with both sexes. So it's not as, they're a little more accustomed to it. It's not as big of a barrier of entry, but for the average heterosexual yeah. male, man, you can count that shit for us. What do you have to say on this topic, Pat? So you had something to say. Uh, all right. My my internet is acting funny. Can y'all hear me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, I think, I think people should stop worrying about what's the norm or what should be the norm. I think the only way we're going to be able to just accept certain things and it won't be a problem if we stop worrying about what's the norm and what everybody else is doing, whatever. Like, it shouldn't be a norm. Like, what the fuck is normal? Like, seriously. Like, even if, even if you have a nuclear family or whatever uh, with um, father and um, wife or whatever, who's to say that they don't do anything weird within their relationship? Well, I mean, I said father and wife, but uh, husband and wife and everything. Who's to say the husband and wife ain't doing something weird, pretty much? So what the fuck is normal? I think we should just, like, not worry about what would be the norm or what is the norm or whatever. And mind our own goddamn business. And I think we'll be all right. I think that's what the people worry about too much. What is the norm? Or, or, or is the norm ever going to change? Or, you know whatever it get they get they people are them. naturally scared of change anyway that's it so that people oh, always constantly want to know what the norm is how shit affect them people yeah say. do you yeah, feel like people always want to know what the norm is so they can fit in yeah i feel like i feel like they want to know i feel like they just want to be up to date with everything they don't want to be left behind with certain stuff or whatever and if they get that cognitive dissonance in a certain subject or whatever, and it's something new or whatever, then that's when the disagreements come around. But the norm is fine to me if it's a yeah. diverse norm. And I think that's the problem. We've gotten away from that. Like it used to be a time when you had a place in the village for the crazy person, they were the shaman. They were the one that saw spirits and was dancing around with the monkey bone in the nose and and you know, and like doing the weird rituals, and that was their space. And you had the jocks that were the hunters, and you had the knitters, and you had the people that were kind of the lazy ones that didn't really do nothing. And you had a space for them, and they were the ones that you showed charity to, and that you know, like it, it was a place for everybody. What happened was the norm became to everybody had to be the chief. Mm -hmm. If you want the chief, you was looked at like you're crazy. So then it became a bunch of people who now displaced. So everybody fighting to be the chief. And that's why everybody is doing the same shit. Like the, I think we're always going to be a people that want to be a part of a whole I mm -hmm. think that's part of the biology of the human species that we're going to want to be part of a whole. I think there is possibility though, and room for 
the whole to be made up of a bunch of different types of pieces. Mm-hmm. Like I, I always, I don't know, maybe it's just my biased take on it, but I look at like my friend group. If you met any of my friend group individually, you wouldn't think they would hang together, but they all fit together. You know what I mean? Like, so like, to me, that's proof that like you can find common bonds and still be hella different. Like, even like every friend group I've been a part of in my life, like even on a small level, like when you look at like associates from work and shit, I always find myself in the middle of a bunch of people that don't seem to match. Like mm-hmm. you're a very earthy neo soul type and you're a thug and you're a hoochie and you're a lesbian and you're a, you're uh, a hoochie. I don't know exactly what to call you. I, I just know you you go by you uh, a pronoun, you know, and yeah. all of that fit together somehow. And nobody seems to step on each other's toes. So I think it's room for it. I think it's just if people are willing to, again, I think one of those biggest things is insecurities, like the best friend groups, the best relationships, the best things all come down to people like trying to check in their insecurities and just being like, all right. I'm secure in this bond. Anything mm-hmm. outside of that, I ain't tripping off of. As long as the bond is good, we good. You do what you do. And I think that we can get there. It's just a matter of like fighting against that. It's the boss mentality that makes everybody act the same. It's the, mm-hmm. I have to have the freshest jeans or this brand of jeans to be cool as opposed to just like, I can be cool with these off brand jeans that I've designed and drew on my own way Uh you know what i'm saying so it's like if more people but but you got to be secure in that because it may come with some jokes at first Mm -hmm. like you feel me like even in the bible when noah started building the ark people was talking to him like the fuck are you doing but he was Mm -hmm. resolute in being different and building the ark in the middle of dry land with no sign of rain because he was like well this shit gonna work I, i know where i'm going with it and i think the best bosses are always the people who won't chase and being bosses. They were just chasing the thing that they were happy with. Even when people thought they were weird. Like Bill Gates became what he was because he was chasing like he was really into technology. That was it. He just was a techno nerd. The money and the billions came because he was chasing that shit. Like everybody that you look at that is a boss aren't chasing being a boss. The people who made Balmain jeans all of a sudden pop, they won't trying to be cool. They just saw a pair of jeans online and was like, I like those. I'm going to put them on. Yeah, they're a little tight. I know they, people are going to laugh at me and call me a girl, but I don't care. I like them. And then people saw the <laughs> confidence that you wore that thing with, and now they become the thing. So I think if people get more into like, fuck it. I'm okay with people thinking I'm weird or thinking I'm ugly or thinking I'm this and thinking I'm that as long as I'm still okay with being me. Then you get more bosses and you get more of that. What you said is like bucking the norm because then the norm is being individual. The cool thing to be is you're different. If you're like everybody, Mm -hmm. then it's a problem. Like hip hop was like at one point where like it was cool to be different. So you had niggas with feathers and weird cowboy outfits and shit and rat tassels and booty shorts with with space boots and diapers and all kinds of weird shit back in the day. You look at look, look at hip hop when it first started. That shit looked like a circus. And every group was hella different. You had niggas with sequin suits and, and sparklers coming out. They, 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 they like weird shit. Shit that I'm sure at the time different groups would look at each other and be like, oh fuck do you got on? But they were like, fuck it, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I know it was a joke on, but I'm cool with being I'm cool with being joked on. I'm okay with you thinking I'm weird. And then they became the trend. Then everybody on the street started saying, oh, look at that. I'm going to do that. So I think if you if you get to exactly. where, like, instead of pushing this thing that I'm doing is cool, people started to push the message of being me being different is cool. Not what I'm doing. The thing that I'm doing is cool. Do your thing. And that's the cool thing. Whatever that is. If you want to be a t-shirt salesman on the beach, you do that to the best of your ability. The same way if you want to be a Fortune 500 CEO, you push that. Whatever your thing is, you push that, and you're going to be all right. But the problem is capitalism. 
It always mm-hmm. goes to money. <laughs> Ain't no money in that. It's money in selling certain things. It's a it's a whole marriage industry that would make yeah. more money. But again, when you get to religion and money, it's always those two barriers. It's either the religious group, we got to get past them, or we got to get to the point where it's financially feasible to be different. Then it's cool. Boy, the way you said that wedding in- industry, I know I've seen that documentary one time, and they explain where the weddings actually come from. That's billions so, of dollars, man. It's all a scam. It's all a scam. From the diamond industry to the jewelry industry to, like, all of that. It's a whole, like... It's all a marketing scam. There's not necessarily conspiracies, but there's groups that have vested interests in each other doing well, and they drive mm-hmm. a lot of the things that we hold dear. Mm-hmm. But that's that goes back into what you were saying earlier um, with everybody rebelling against everything, because the reason why people are rebelling about everything is because we're discovering and learning that everything that we've learned to be to have some kind of traditional value, it's really some bullshit to sell us something. But that's why I say we're going to get there. Because, like, at some point, there's going to be a new thing. Like, polygynous relationships are going to be normal. Polygamous relationships are going to be normal. It won't be a weird, taboo thing anymore. But there will be a new thing that everybody will be like, oh, I don't know if we should do that. Sexual beings. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to keep on progressing. I think it's going to progress as beings. Like, there was a time when you couldn't say curse words on TV. Then cable came and everybody was cursing. Mm-hmm. Then it became taboo to show sex on TV. Then cable started pushing that boundary. So it's always something that's going to push the boundary and it's going to get weirder and crazier. But then it's going to always, the crazier it gets, that then becomes the norm. And then the new thing becomes the taboo. So it's, you know. Mm-hmm. We're a hu- we're a weird ass species, us humans. Fucking monkeys with anxiety disorder. I'm not a monkey. No. I ain't gonna really you're not. Be but I understand what you were trying to get at. But I ain't gonna- <laughs> No, you're not, <laughs> sir. No. I don't know why I own it. I remember when my son was born. No, because you're black. I would never call another black person monkey. That, yeah, man, that thing is ugh. just feel yeah. like, like calling somebody boy. Yeah, bro. No. Yeah, just hit that it hit that nerve. You did. Only person, only person I call boy is my son, because that's what that's what he is, my boy. But I don't allow nobody else to call him that shit. But yeah, I don't no, even call him boy. I call him my boy. So I feel you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's so good. I say boy, you, if you ask him what no. if you ask him what, what daddy call you, he'd be like, boy. <laughs> but don't nobody else call me that. Exactly. Don't nobody else know. You like you like Kratos on uh, God of War? <laughs> Named his son Boy. Boy, come here. Oh, that was the boy. boy. Hey, like his name was Boy. Yeah. Like birth certificate, you boy. Yeah, boy. yeah. And on the new Kratos uh, God of War, boy, he got a son. If I ever heard it, there. It he has a son, and he just called that son Boy. That's like this, like. <laughs> come on now, boy, come here. Well, you know, you know, a nigga um, voice Kratos as as pale as they try to make him. Who was that? Keith David? Uh, yeah, I believe so. It's either Keith David or the guy or Kyle from Living Single. Okay. But Keith David is fucking amazing. That voice over. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Okay. What do you yeah. Him, Ving Reigns, and uh, another nigga. But they good. Like they they just like whatever they voice over, it just always sounds like epic. They like mm-hmm. Morgan. Morgan. Like Kevin Kevin Morgan. 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 It's a Kevin Michael Davison. He's a uh, he's a big uh, he's a black voiceover um uh, for like a lot of cartoons. Like if you were like like John Stewart off of Justice League or something like that, like any type of person that got like a black voice. He probably did majority of those black voices on cartoons. Like, the, uh, I think it's Keith Michael Davidson or something like that. I think it's his name. But yeah, uh, shout out random to trivia. Oh, shout out to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, 
don't know. You did it, so I was like, well, let me do it. I forgot we actually had that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've grown over the years. That's funny to say. Yeah. Oh, shit. I ain't got my watch on. One of y'all. Uh, uh, it is 11.18. Well, I think that's time. What it time is it? Oh. Well, um, what, what, what episode is this? Is this episode 80? It is. It is. Ep- We're at Ocho Ocho Zeta. Episode Ocho Zero. Ocho. Ochenta. Ochenta. Yeah, that's what it is. Ochenta. Good ain't talk around. <laughs> Yeah. We have been there thing. What was a slow last week last week has unfortunately and fortunately rose up the fuckery meter pretty much. Right All the up, up from the depths like the undertaker. It just seemed like day after day it was something building up. So um I'm gonna get all my serious stuff out the way first. And then we can get into the shit that we could talk shit about. But um, rest in peace to Atlanta uh, rapper Trouble. God damn it. Every week. Rest in Every peace. Week. Rest in Every peace. week. Rest in Every peace. week. It's like day after day, I found out more and more stuff about it. And it oh, was like they QC. found, huh? Oh, he was QC. Oh, he was with duct tape. I not sure exactly one, but I know he probably did one, mm-hmm. one of them. He was he was rising up as far as his um uh fan base and everything. I know that much. So but um first I saw somebody post it on on Facebook. And then the more the days progressed, the more we found out about it. They said he was shot while he was sleeping in the car, then they found out that he was chilling with some chick. The ex-boyfriend came on, came home. Ex boyfriend wasn't for it, kind of fits into our polygamy polyamory <laughs> conversation, but he wasn't for it. For it, um, shots were fired, and I, trouble got out of there, drove, and I think he was trying to reach the hospital and he just didn't make it. And that's how they found him. You seem to be but, a uh, knowledgeable on this situation. When he, how did the ex boyfriend get in the house if he the ex? <laughs> That's what I. Huh? I think it was a breaking in. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Home I'm looking like this. You have a key? That don't sound like an ex to me. That sounds like that nigga came home from work and was like, "The fuck is this nigga doing in my bed?" I'm all yeah. I know is is I'm pretty sure he probably saw something on social media. Social media. Yep, he found he saw some on social media, or somebody sent something to him on social media that saw that, and boom, something clicked in his head, and boom, he went straight there. I don't know. It could have just been that happened to be that day when he decided to make his crazy, his, his monthly crazy show up. Mm-hmm. That been, might be true. I was there when it happened. His name is Jamichael Jones, and he actually turned himself in. I think either today or yesterday. These tender yeah. ass niggas, man. Let it go when you get broken up with. Let it go. It is. Yeah, it doesn't help. Shit is that, going, that, that, Move on. That, that few minutes of anger you had cost you your life and your freedom. Now you you off the streets. You in prison. You in jail now. But you're gonna be going to prison. Um, Over a girl you ain't gonna see anymore. And where you going? You ain't gonna see any girl. Or a girl who don't want you. Take this, mm-hmm. take this fella. This is a lesson I learned a long time ago, and it's a real pimp ass lesson, a real player ass lesson. To get it. <laughs> if somebody can take somebody from you, they want yours in the begin with. Yeah. If she step out on you, she ain't yours. That so part. how can you get mad about something that ain't yours? Part. You feel me? That part. <laughs> Big facts. 
especially if you don't whoa. got a ring on it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, 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 even if you even if you got a ring on it, I don't care. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, if, if, if somebody yeah. chooses that's to true. Leave that you, is true. They ain't for you. If somebody chooses to leave you, they ain't for you. Because the people who for you ain't gonna leave you. So if she mm-hmm. left you, move on. They don't need to keep trying to get back in that picture because regardless of how much you try to get back in, she still closed that door because she don't want to be with you. And you keep mm-hmm. trying to be with somebody who don't want to be with you makes you look insane. Have more self-respect and more self-love for yourself to see who so nobody don't want you, want yourself that much more. Move the fuck on because those few minutes of anger you have about she moving on cost you so much more. Yeah, now for the rest of your life, you think about that stupid ass decision. That's the easy people think about that one fucking night. That one fucking night you had to think about for the rest of your fucking life. I don't care, I don't care if you get all the commentary, you can get all the shit, you can be the king in prison. You the king in prison. Mm-hmm. You know what that shit like? That shit like you show up to an audition and you don't get this part, but you keep showing up to the fucking set every day yelling this shit outside the fucking gate. Like, nigga, they have casted the part the show had the production has moved on. They are ready to edit now, sir. Mm-hmm. Get to stepping. That's mm-hmm. pitiful to me. And I've had my heart broken. But ain't nothing sadder than sitting there chasing behind somebody. Like once it's over, it's over. Yeah, bro. I yeah. learned that the hard way myself. Fucking birds, man. For them. I see if they come back to you. That's a discussion. Don't take shit. But you out here, she ain't checking for you and you keep pulling up. Like, come on, man. It's embarrassing to yourself. And you lucky that you caught the man sleeping because that could have went wrong for him. He pull up in there and the wrong dude in the living room and just get the firing because the door opening. Now you dead as a donut because you want to pull up on X Bay. She gonna mm-hmm. take me back. Now you done took some hot shit to the chest. Like the shit just stupid. It, it don't end well. And like, it don't do. end well. Ain't nothing you gonna see by pulling up that's gonna make you feel better about the situation. She ain't at home pining away for you. If she was, she would have called you or texted. Like mm-hmm. in this day of social media and shit, it's obvious if a girl wants you back cause she gonna start putting out little tweets and mm-hmm. DM you and say, hey, big head or something. Like it, you ain't gonna nope. tell me it ain't a million ways for you to find out that a girl wants you back other than being a stalker and being creepy and doing this weirdo shit. Like I hate that shit. I yeah, and that go for you yeah. two women. Like, don't be out here keying up cars and having your girlfriend swing by your your ex dude's place of business and shit to see if he going on the, out to lunch with the girl. Like, fuck all that. If when shit is over, people, it's over. Oh man, because this this is just a dumbass crime. Like, this shouldn't happen. Yeah, anytime. Oh, definitely violate, but. Rest in peace and my condolences and prayers to Trouble and his family. And keep your head on the swivel out here, folk, in the dating game. When you laid up with a woman or laid up with a man, make sure you take you know what's going on. on. Just be falling asleep everywhere, man, because you never I was going to. I was going to say the same thing, though, especially if it's a woman you just met, whatever. You don't know what crazy motherfucker she had before. Tell from a person Even that experienced. Look at it. Look, go back to the Gucci Mane situation when he got set up by the stroke. Exactly. Exactly. Like, watch who you hanging out with, man. Like, folks, <laughs> it's a lot of people looking to do some scandalous shit. So you got to really watch these days. It's, it's a little bit more. More people have a, a fucked up mentality. So See, it, one, uh, that's one of the main reasons why. I might have stayed single for a long time because of craziness like this that could happen mm-hmm. and craziness that will happen to other people, pretty much. You just got to watch who you decide to lay with because you don't know. And it might not even be, it might not be the person you lay with has, it. it's, it's, it's something wrong with them personality-wise or in, in general. It might around. just be the situation that they're in with other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now you just want to chill one day, and just because you're chilling one day, you're drag. Hey, it's been plenty of craziness that yeah, I got into because be I wanted careful. to chill with a chick. So ladies got to be careful fucking around with these rappers. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Rapper, they got a fucking uh a, a beef. level beef going on in the streets, and you ain't nobody. And they say you know his beef coming to your front door, and you 
you ain't even about that life. Mm-hmm. Or um, you with this rapper, he get he get um, busted by the police, and you're getting dragged down with him just by association. Mm-hmm. Big fact. Yep. Big fact. So, yeah, but rest in peace to all the um, and my condolences to trouble and anyone involved. Pretty much, another rest in peace. And that's it for rest in pieces. No disrespect, but shit's a little too much. It's happening too much. Whatever. Um, Metro Boomin, producer Metro Boomin, his mother was killed by her husband in a murder suicide. So he killed the Metro Boomin's mom and he killed himself. Damn. Yeah, that shit's crazy. And I, I know that that got to be, I wouldn't know how to respond. To some shit like that. That's some coward ass shit. Yeah, very much so. Murder, oh, murder suicide hey. from from that's some bullshit. Because my thing is, most times the murder suicide, <laughs> you can kill the person, and you don't want to face the consequences, so you take yourself out too. Mm-hmm. So that's some punk ass shit. Rest in peace, Metro Woman Long. Yeah, I'm a big fan. The, the culprit, the, the, the culprit behind it. Now, I don't know the I don't know the circumstances, but the full circumstances behind it. That ain't my business. But as an outsider looking in, that was that's a weak ass shit. Big fact. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Last serious thing, because I don't want to drag the mood down, but um, also rest in peace to all the victims at the Chattanooga nightclub shooting. It seems like every day there's a new freaking shooting, but it was three dead and fourteen injured. Uh, I still and it now, but in the military, man, everybody else be, needs to be out here scrapping because because it happens so much. It makes me want to reevaluate what is considered a mass shooting. Because if they are, is the media really is the media using the word mass shooting? No, there's Two. a textbook definition that differentiates like a mass shooting versus a serial killing versus a, a killer who just like, I think it's like a location. I think it's like the type of location it is. So like mm-hmm. you can be both. So like when you have a person that come in and kill their whole family, that's a mass, that's a mass killing if they shoot it. So that's, that's okay. It, it's just they don't say it like that unless it's a public thing so i think some of these mass definition when you kill over a certain amount of people in one location at one time mm-hmm. or, in mass a, mass or in a immediate <laughs> series of time that's a mass killing if you kill a same if you kill people over a certain period of time then it becomes serial killing mm-hmm. there's a textbook definition when they talk about like the laws and like that type of thing well um the House of Representatives, because of all these shootings, has passed a slate of bills to restrict access to guns and ammunition. And that, but I think we'll see what it ain't about restricting access, man, because all these people don't got a mental health record. All these people don't got like some of these people got clean records and they will get guns anyway. When these mm-hmm. guys, man, we need to get rid of the guns or at least change the type of guns that are available. Like to me, I'll be honest with you. I don't think no type of no type of projectile weapon should be allowed past a slingshot or a bow and arrow. Yeah, fuck that up like guns. Like if you nice enough with the bow and arrow to get off a certain amount of shots and kill that many folks, like you you deserve it. You worked yeah. your ass off. But the average person ain't gonna be able to do that no more. And that's the problem. Like average people can now do this. And the purpose of having guns to make sense when the average person was making their, like getting their food from hunting. Mm-hmm. Not the case no more, man. Like, let's just be completely honest. We are literally holding on and letting anybody who lives in city areas get shot the fuck up to appease a small amount of people who are a part of the hunting community. And if they're real hunters, they can get their ass out there and hunt with something else. I feel like I ain't no hunter, and I don't live in the city. But I don't had a nigga come in my motherfucking house and fuck. I'd rather have a gun in my house to keep a motherfucker out of my house to protect my family than have a bow and arrow 
because I can get that gun off a lot quicker. You coming in my house and me pulling and get my bow and arrow out and protect my family in my house. How many people are going to be breaking in the houses when they ain't got the protection of a gun themselves to make them feel more confident the nigga, about breaking the nigga, the, nigga that broke, the nigga that broke in the place out that they had no gun. He had a knife. People so, know what they do, but I'll say exactly. this. Everything don't need to keep ending in a damn death because we got guns. Yeah. And at the end yeah. of the day, like the practical use of a gun on an everyday basis, like you're talking about needing a gun to be reactionary to somebody else doing something. Mom's saying, if somebody breaking your house and they take your shit strong arm style, then damn it, they got that shit. But you still walk away alive and they still walk away alive. Don't nobody need to be dead over no fucking big screen. So average, my the, thing is the average they, shooting they in their house. The average shooting is gang warfare, mass shootings, people out here accidentally shooting themselves because it's a kid that done picked up a gun or somebody who don't know what the fuck they doing or like all of that shit. Like that's unnecessary. Like what's the, what's the practical use of a gun outside of protecting yourself from another gun? In today's society, in 2022. When the last time you was walking and was like, oh shit, it's a wild boy coming. I need my musket. <laughs> like, like, what yeah, shit? Like, know, just like, well, I being honest, like, well, like yeah, joke I live in a situation. You got wild animals. You shoot somebody. You need that shit out here. I live in. But we got, we got bear that come out every day. We got, you got snakes. So you got to deal with the wild animals. It ain't running in the house when you get a wild animal out here. We deal with wild but, animals. We don't live in the city. <laughs> we actually in. I live in the yeah. woods, so we deal with wild animals out here. I will so say, bear, if a bear come out, you got to pull out that shotgun and let some off. <laughs> well, I would say your in your predicament, that's I would put that man. in the same category as hunting, like. But that's in, what I'm in saying. General. Like the protection person ain't hunting, man. Like that's what I'm yeah. Saying. Like I, I'm tired of people like making these little subs that like the average person ain't doing that. The average person ain't living in backwood country where a bear gonna roll up on their front porch. And if they are, like there was a time when people were living in those conditions and didn't have guns and they lived there just fine. With weaker housing systems and no doors with locks. Bears would just push right on up in a fucking buckskin TP. So I, I'm saying like, at the end of the day, we're in 2022 where People are dying in ways where they don't have to be. If we're going to keep making vaccines and all this shit to keep people from dying from diseases they don't need to die from, then what are we keeping guns around from that are killing people at this high of a rate? If you're bad enough to kill 10 people at one time with a knife, then damn it, that, might, that, that is an outlier. But I guarantee you 15 people in 15 weeks ain't going to be bad enough to do that, to repeat that same thing. Right now, 15 random people can just pick up an automatic rifle or AR and just go on somewhere and air that bitch out with no recompense. And when they talk about restrictions at the end of the day, you're talking about making it a background check more vigorous. The average person that's doing these mass shootings ain't people that's gonna show up on the <laughs> round check. That's how they keep getting these legal guns. It ain't, we ain't talking about people getting guns off the black market that got a rap sheet a mile long or a terrorist or something. We talking about Joe Schmo. Like, I don't like these folk no more. And I'm at a point where I feel like I want to do this. And I got the firearms and ammunition to do it. I, I, I don't know. <clears throat> um. I would say, I think humans are too stupid with certain technology. That's it. I'm not saying all of them, but I don't trust humans enough. Like <clears throat> things ain't been right since we started yeah. fucking with gunpowder. I I would I would say I would say this: the simple fact that I have to be on a pivot or I got to be on guard. Just because I see a gun. Just because I see a gun. I don't know what's in that dude's head that's carrying it. You know what I'm saying? Unless I know them personally, pretty much. Just the simple fact that I got to be on guard because of that. Now, if you protect your, your family and everything like that, oh, I'm, I, don't, I understand that or whatever. But it's certain guns, like all the guns that they're using in these shootings, there is no reason that a citizen that are everyday. Where are you going to war? 
Yes. Like exactly, they, they, everyday citizens. Now, if you have like a handgun or something like that, all right, understand. Okay, I've hunted. I've hunted. Like I can't even justify the hunting excuse no more because I've hunted with my uncles and we didn't use nothing that was automatic. We, like a lot of my uncles still hunt with like boat action <laughs> shit, shit that shoot all one round at a time. <laughs> And you gotta put throw another bitch in the chamber before you just like hunters ain't out here needing no like if you need all that nigga you ain't a hunter you just out here ma mass murdering animals you ain't even hunting you ain't no skill in that you know marksmanship and airing the bitch out with a machine gun like what the fuck do you need a why do you have a fifty cal sir what armor are you piercing ain't no rabbits walking around here and no tanks. Like people just be like, I don't know, man. It, I can dig the, uh, I don't know. Mm. Our mentality ain't right in this country. We don't deserve guns. Yeah, that's Sweden. That's what I said. Sweden and Switzerland and them countries that actually respect what firearms do to human flesh. Let them have it. We don't deserve it. Meanwhile, the NRA was having a meeting and they said that you cannot, you you can't come. They they restricted guns Big from, in the gun. meeting. Yeah, they, they restricted uh, guns at the NRA meeting because of all the mass shooting. Irony. Irony. But um, yeah, um, that's that's that should end all the bullshit that may, you know, piss you off and everything. Time to get into out of these well, arms. Nah. There we yeah. Um Got it. let's see. South Korea oh. shot eight <laughs> missiles. <laughs> so South Korea shot eight missiles. So the U.S. Well, no, the South Korea and U.S. launched eight missiles in response to North Korea shooting off eight missiles. Because you know Kim Jong Un like to shoot off his missiles from time to time. Pause, because that sounds like a pause moment. But yeah, that's crazy. Um, here's a little bit of karma. Cal Rittenhouse says he's going to Texas A and E, now uh, A and M, and it's going to be awesome. And the user in the University of Texas A and M says, "Nope." People in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And the university says, "Nope." Access denied. <laughs> what? You gonna bring your crazy ass on my campus? Y'all know what to do with him, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Yeah, that's just crazy. Um, all right. What is and... this world coming to, yo? Like where you can kill a bunch of people in a church and then be like, yeah, y'all, fuck, fuck prison. I'm going to college. World what? ain't coming to world ain't coming <clears throat> to nothing, man. It's just you know, except an essay look like after that. Like, what the fuck, yo? This country is weird as hell, yo. I I'm sorry, like. Ain't shit gonna be right till we get a real moral compass. Like the shit that we are Never happening is wow, and the shit that we are for is the foundation of this country. Who was written? The guy that was shooting people in the um North in Carolina the protest. mass murder that shot up the black folk in the church. No, that's not Cal Rittenhouse. Uh, that's Dylan Roof. Oh, that's Dylan Roof. Many fucking crazies out here. Which one? Yeah, is Cal, Rittenhouse? Cal Rittenhouse. He's the one when they were doing the black. Lives Matter um, protests and everything over George Floyd. He walked down. He, he came up there with artillery, saying he was like vigilante and start shooting. Young boy. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, asshole. Nutty, nutty, Fuck. nutty nigga with a gun. Yep. 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 I, but I give up on this country. I. You know how we was talking about us having hope? I don't got no hope. No, nope. I'm sorry, Face. I don't got no hope. No. Nope. No, nah, I lost hope a long time ago. Get no I lost. We ain't gonna never get I lost no hope. hope. I lost hope as soon as I went into history class. My first history class. That, that's when I lost hope. Oh, oh, this is what's going on? Oh, fuck this place. I gotta get my money up and get out of here. Fuck this pledge. Fuck the Pledge of Allegiance. Fuck your Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, shit fuck is all nice. that shit. Fuck that nigga on the $20 bill. Fuck all that shit, man. And that goes back to what we were saying earlier. 
everybody's finding out how full of shit this America and the marketing behind America is. And they're rebelling against everything. Pretty much. So, so man, I'm tired of it, man. Like, I'm, I'm really over this shit, yo. Like, I'm, I'm about, yeah, man. The shit um, there and the shit that we look at as a bad <laughs> thing is so flipped and topsy turvy. Yeah, well, I gave up on this country a Give long this time. this nigga ago, a so. chance to get an education. He's shown he deserves it. Not. Fuck that. Uh, no. it's either way, if he get an education or not, he's still going to be good because he's white. <laughs> so, yeah. Speaking of um, other news and protests and white them. <laughs> and white them. White them, yes. Uh, three abortion activists stripped to their underwear in protest during a Joel Osteen church service. I don't see how and this 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 is what I, I'm talking about, these stupid ass protests. You're not achieving for anything. or against abortion. And what and they're, them stripping down to their underpants have to do with abortion? Like what exactly attention. was the connection? They get well, attention. They attention. they strip down to get their attention, and they on the national scale because Joe Lawson is televised. Got it. Got so they had it. a plan behind it, but they had a plan behind it, but it it, it really had no no substance in their plan. They they, they had, okay, we're gonna do this, and we can get on TV, but the substance <laughs> of uh, uh, the substance of it isn't anything. And, and protests like that take away from the main mission of the 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 main objective of Amen. said protest. Um, when you have when you have uh, the outliers who do dumb shit like this that that shows that that puts a negative light on whatever side of the protest that they may be on pro or or con um sure you you strip down to your underwear but that's not empowering that just that's an attention grabber um that's the same thing as putting a bathing suit on and going in the grocery store it's an attention grabber it, it, it's a thirst it's a thirst trap so eyes are diverted to you you're on a national scale so of course mm-hmm. joe Osteen camera is going to phase to the thing that's the weird thing in the in the crowd the, na- the almost naked people whatever your cause was got overshadowed by your action so yeah i would have expected more if they did like some performance art or they would like pussy riot over in russia where they like do some some like statement piece that fits with whatever it is that they're protesting so like you know what i mean like you get some out of it like they all and you know how they had them performance artists that almost do like commercials for the thing that they're protesting or something but people mm-hmm. like this like i put them in the same category as the people who throw like glitter and blood and shit on people like okay you've done this shock value thing but then what how have you changed no anybody's way. heart it's, or changed anybody's mind towards your side? Now you just look crazy. That's really it. It's done something for shock value, but you achieve the shock with no value. Yeah, ain't it's no just, yeah. It's right. just like um when uh <laughs> Dave Chappelle wow. when Dave Chappelle was talking about uh the ladies with the pussy hats trying to protest. Like what? what okay, what's the point? This Think of something better. Like none of this is it's all it's gonna lead to is you having attention. See, they that's it. Holler, if they was gonna do something crazy like this, they should have hollered them protesters down at uh University of Texas that did the deal though, because it was like the open carry. So they was looking at the absurdity of the fact that it's illegal to carry dildos, but we can but we we are allowed to carry our Glock in the class. So like that made sense. They made a clear connection that like their their weirdness, it was shock value behind it because you see a mm-hmm. large mass of like hundreds of kids walking with dildos, but the message is connected to the protest. So it makes you go back and then do the research. You're like, is that true on the law? Oh, that's weird. You got naked in church. I have no idea. Like I had to ask you just now, like, are they for or against abortion? Like, what's the connection mm-hmm. to abortion and what what side are you on? <laughs> Oh, you was protesting some about it, but what? <laughs> okay, just looked like a loony motherfucker that was in church that lost his mind. But I still don't know what. Mm-hmm. The... Age old saying: it's a time and a place for everything. If, if, if you're trying to support a cause, you got to put that saying into your 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 mentality. You got to choose the right time and the right place. You can have a protest about a, a good cause, a good protest. But you have it at the wrong time. It's just like a bunch of silly motherfuckers shouting in a circle. 
So you got to use that time and the place mentality when you when you're protesting and trying to get a good point across about whatever whatever your your heel is you're trying to stand on. That that's that. Um, it shows how don't, organized don't, they don't were. Try to get the point out looking silly as shit. It was only three of them, so it shows how mm-hmm. organized they were. They didn't have a large movement with them. <laughs> like no, nah, they were just some <clears throat> petite ass protests. Some they were just some goofy ass kids. They were joking around, probably got drunk the night before. You say, yeah, you know, it sounds like do. That I'm trying to get attention for my YouTube channel type shit more than mm-hmm. um, you know what we should do. And, and nowadays, that could be what it is. Nowadays, that could just be just what it is. Yes, Some sir. content creators found out, you know what, we're going to go to Joe Osteen Church, get close to the front row. We're going to do this. You record us. Don't get me wrong, man. Yeah. There's some things about Joe Osteen that mm, I don't agree with all the way. Don't get me wrong. But I enough about him. I hear a bunch of weird stuff, but I don't really pay him enough. Man, I don't pay him no money. He, 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 he don't blip on my radar enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just some really certain things that he's done that just seem like, all right, you you could have did better. Don't you could have did better. Any of the mega church practice pastors or them televangelists <laughs> never really surprised at what they do. Some mm-hmm. of what they do can be like shocking in the type of, but. The fact that they did it don't surprise me. Like mm-hmm. we've seen over the years, them uh, high ups in religion would do a whole lot of shit. It's a whole bunch of shit behind that religion shit, but that's a different story for a different day. Oh yeah, we can go. We they have a good history, a good long history. Oh, Thousands of years. People in power, power corrupts. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, and it's and it seems like my phone is acting real stupid right now, <laughs> or whatever. Oh, you um, so clear to us. Yeah, um, but yeah, I was trying to get to the dang list, and it kept freezing on me or whatever. But I know what the the next thing on the list is some ridiculous random rapper named Bandman Kivo. Oh, he's not a rapper. <laughs> no, he's not. Nope. He's one of those, you know how during the pandemic, a bunch of those fake financial gurus started popping up on stuff like, uh, le- what is it? Uh, financial leisure or leisure fit or whatever the fuck the podcast is about finance. They started uh-huh. popping up all of a sudden and him, him 5,000 and all of these other dudes. He's one of those. He's one of those fake uh-huh. financial gurus that was teaching people uh, to go do PPP loans and other type of loan scams and that type of thing. He's one of them. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Rapper esque, but doesn't rapper. have the talent of a rapper. I don't want to give him too much credit. Oh well, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, because that's that's what they were just saying on the article. I didn't know who he was, but I did. Somebody did tell me that what you were saying that he was being one of those financial advisors or whatever. He hangs with rappers though. Yeah, he is in that circle. But the fuck shit he did to um, who these scams. Nope, he ain't scam anybody. Bad man Kivo gets liposuction for his abs and hints that other rappers have done it. What I don't, I'm not surprised that other rappers have done it, but the simple fact that body sculpting, yeah, yep, yep. So I've been working out and stuff, but I still got this fat and everything. He's so a lazy. Nigga. Since he has the money for it, because he's so financially adept and whatnot. He was a lazy nigga. What not? He was a lazy nigga, and niggas is doing way too much shit. Let me let me let me say this: heterosexual, binary, cisgendered men are doing way too much shit that is not meant for that particular category. Hey, yeah. The, pet, the pedicures and manicures was about as far as we should have. We should have stopped there. Like, that's about as far as you need to go with. But now you got niggas getting eyebrows done. And let me go get my BBL and all that. Man, what let the me, fuck? Let me back you up. Let me back you up real quick. Let me back you up real quick. Let me back you up real quick, please. Um, uh, you said a couple things that I want you to educate me on. Because... I don't. I, I choose not to educate myself on a free basis on this new terminology on 
gender shit because I was taught one thing and I'm gonna keep doing what the fuck I was taught. But I'm gonna let you teach me some shit right now. So you said binary and cis gender shit. What the fuck is that? I know what heterosexual is and cool. I, I'm down. I'm back. Just what is another, these other two shit? All right. What Just the fuck another, is these binary? So it, it's more than one thing people have to be now? What, what, what is this shit? So I just flow with your conversation. I want to understand. All right. So from, all right. So now I got to look it up to make sure I don't say the definitions wrong. But basically, <laughs> binary, it means like you are basic like you identify as just male or female you don't identify as nothing else i think all right now under that you can be a binary person and be gay because you identify as a man one of the two major genders that are society accepts but you are <coughs> so Cisgender means that you identify as the actual gender you were assigned at birth. So you were born a boy, you would identify as a boy. Binary means something like that, but not only do you identify, it's like you identify as a human boy or some, something like that. And then what was the other one? Uh, heterosexual means that you like women you like the opposite sex only but let me let me let me uh hold on gender binary all right so binary means that you are classified in the form of two distinct opposite forms of either masculine or fem feminine so you're either a gender binary meaning that you're either boy or man or you're a girl or a woman that that's gender binary so if you're non-binary that means you don't identify as a man or a woman you identify more as like a combination of the two or you gender fluid or you're like sometimes you feel like a man sometimes you feel like a woman if i'm understanding it correctly from the definition all right so that's binary non -bi a lot of people who are gender fluid or who are in that the, the, the lgbtq community plus community they they don't all consider themselves male or female some of them consider themselves like there's people that's a part of that community that are not anything sexual they are non-binary so they might consider themselves more to just be a being or a spirit or or something else has nothing to do with their sexual orientation or what they like to screw or none of that. It's just what they see themselves as and what they identify as, as a person. A transgender would be non-binary because they don't see themselves as necessarily being part of the original thing. That also kind of bleeds into cisgender because cisgender means that not only are you binary, but that you consider yourself to be the gender that you were born. So, yeah. And then and the only people that actually go through and deal with these terms. I had to say that because, not you know, the groups out there, I don't know who you, you know, people get a weirded out when you start talking about just straight male or female. So I want to make sure people knew that I'm speaking from my group of people who are, we consider ourselves males. We are men. That's what we are. We like women. That's all we like. Us. I don't know none of this new shit. I, I was born in 1983. I'm a dude who like women. You are that's what I do. Well, uh, not dude. you are a binary cisgendered heterosexual male. No, my name is Face. I'm a dude who like women. I ain't going through all the other shit. I, I, I be da I, I be damned if somebody asks me, "Hey man, what? I'm a non motherfucker. I'm Face. I like I, I'm married to a woman. I like, and I'm a, they told me I was a dude when I was growing up, so I'm a dude, I got the dick. You know what I mean? That's what I know. So if I offend anybody, I not at the end of the day, I would die. Not really, but it is what it is with me. Whatever you want to each his own. That's that's how I feel. To each his own. Whatever you do, you do. Whatever I do, I do. I don't have to learn your terms. Like 
The only I time was using them because I'm familiar with them and I I don't have a problem. Well, I appreciate yeah. the education because yeah. I don't like to be ignorant in the conversation. Yeah. I don't like to be like I don't know what the fuck you talk about and be like yeah that's going to in the conversation with you. So I appreciate the education, but to anybody out there listening may be may feel offended. Don't be offended. Don't. You got don't. Not that. You get I'm not yeah. against your side. I'm not against. I'm not against anybody. I just know what the fuck I know. This, we will leave it at that. This, the irony of it. The only time people actually use those ter- terms or something or whatever is they're like on social media. There's a cut topic. Somebody, a cis binary gendered heterosexual male, will say something in his view or whatever, and. Then somebody will pop up. I know this cisgendered person is not telling us what blah, 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 this, that, the third. That's the only time we actually see that. Other than that, like, it's, it's, so, you might use those terms. The word, the the only time you use it is like a laboratory. Or I'm going to ask another question. Right. Mm-hmm. When did this word, when, when was this word cisgender created? Is this a new word? But this word always around, and I just people just it, didn't it's use it. Probably, it, it. It's probably always been around, but like I said, it if if anything, it's it's they pick something up that they found in the science book and say, hey, we could use this to describe straight males and stuff like that, and they ran with it. But really, I didn't see anybody actually use the term cisgender male. But people that are not cisgender males. That's it. The rise of it came from women, women and men in the LGBT community saying that to describe or how say differentiate themselves from a regular cisgender male that's out there, pretty much. That's the only that's the only time I've actually seen it done and when it when it first it came depends out depends on your worldview on that i don't know the numbers on it or the actual year that it became popular but i learned of it from the fact that i actually have like one of my better friends down here is a lesbian couple so a lot of times like i am ignorant to it and you know what i'm saying you know in my field of work i come across all types of people so mm-hmm. to make it so that i'm able to actually better understand it and act with people like I often go to them and be like so what what is that and why did somebody say that okay so what do you call that person right there because that doesn't match with y'all uh you know what I'm saying so it's like I learned over time just you know I've known them since like 2008 when we first moved in so I've just over the past 14 years just kind of picked up on like knowledge from them so I've heard them use it that's why I'm getting the terms from and that's kind of why I'm like I don't know all of the shit, but I kind of got a basic understanding enough to be around. I know enough so I won't disrespect and not, you. And not, like, if they say something, I understand what they're saying. So I yeah. lingo, and I can also, like, kind of navigate without being purposefully offensive. Mm-hmm. And Because most people in, the, in those communities, they understand that the average person are not a part of that, so they don't understand all of the terms. So they, for the most part, they're pretty chill with like like they they would expect me to speak in a certain way because i know i i'm around people who are part of that community so i i know better but a person who just coming out the street who just like i don't hang around they don't expect them to be like speaking with their terms they expect them mm-hmm. to be like asking questions and not necessarily know it's like their own you know, language it's kind of like when you have a white person that's like around black people like the average black person ain't gonna expect them to necessarily, if you come from the middle of Wyoming, you population of 13 and you ain't never been around black people, I ain't expecting you to come to my cookout and know certain lingo and customs. I'm expecting <laughs> you to ask. Now, if you're now if you come from there and you have and you're like purposefully doing some wild shit or saying some wild shit, then you're gonna get checked. The same way with their community, I think is more like they more lash out at people who like know better or who are like purposely mm-hmm. trying to degrade them, not people who like say shit out of ignorance and don't mean no harm or don't know no better. Yeah. But yeah. Well, you know, but I, I don't know where it particularly came from, but I do know that like in the dictionary and like they're in there. And I do know that like 
<laughs> binary and heterosexual, and I believe cisgender might be like they were just like scientific terms from the animal kingdom, and like to describe yeah. the way certain animals interacted because you have these same things show up, like you have homosexual animals out there, animals that will like mate and perform copulation with same sex. You have uh, mm -hmm. you have these gender fluid animals out there who may start as a woman, but if the population needs the man, they will switch over and form male gonads to be able to oh, on that set. You know what I'm saying? So they have these different terms already. I think that what happened was as the as we get more and more society, the gay population started to become more um vocal and started to fight for more of their freedoms and rights. And people started to of these other ilks that have been out there in little pockets, but they were suppressing who they were. Cause you know, like back in the day, you be certain things, you get your ass whooped. Mm -hmm. And today even, you know, that stuff still perpetuates. So I think you just got more people being out there. So they're finding like more general population. People like us are like actually trying to figure out like, so what do you call yourself? So what does that mean? So they're mm -hmm. trying to find terms now to like be able to explain it to Joe Schmo off the street in a way that they can wrap their mind around it because it is a term that to the average <laughs> binary cisgender heterosexual person, a lot of this shit doesn't necessarily compute because it's not our norm. You know what I mean? It's the same way like if you go to China that they might eat in certain ways or you might see them pulling shit out to go cook and you'd be like, what the fuck is that? Why are you? But that's just what they do. So like until you're learned about it or until you're cultured and people teach you about it you just don't know you know but mm -hmm. i think it's just those terms were there and they have started being applied to that community more as the conversation started being more had in mainstream like mainstream conversation but yeah True. you know what i mean it's kind of like critical race theory always been there but now that it's a topic of conversation that is becoming an actual political thing, now people are using that term, but that term has been around for 40, 50 years. It's just nobody outside of that immediate field of like teach professors of law and history and shit were actually worrying about it. Yeah. Yeah. How did we get to this? Oh, man, man. man. I said, yeah. I, I use the terms face ass. Mm -hmm. Down one of our wormholes. Yeah, that, that's what happens. We were podding, man. That's what podding is, man. We just podding. 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 Pod. Just podding. Yeah. But bam, man, Kevin, man, the other dude, man, stop all this weirdo shit, man. You don't need no BBL, man. Go do a push up and a crunch. It mm -hmm. works. I have, a, if you got a little pouch at the bottom, first thing you got to do is stop, stop all the extra drinking. All them, all them beers and look, the liquor that's extra carbs is just sitting there. But for two, it's exercises that specifically target that shit. Like I have a flying V because of that shit. Like you, you can get your V on too. You ain't gotta go out there and get somebody to suck all the shit out. You like you ain't gotta be no Kardashian. You ain't gotta do that. Like niggas getting lazy, man. That was it. Niggas just lazy. Nigga, go run. <laughs> Shit, pick up a weight every now and then. God damn, what what, what is what is wrong? <laughs> like <laughs> nigga, I'm gonna tell you what need to happen. That nigga need to go ahead and get caught up on one of them scams, and go to prison. You'll work out every day then. You'll 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 get every, your the natural way real easy. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Hell yeah. I'm done. Liposuction. Nigga, no. Speaking of prison. Like uh, convenience. You got the like to be convenient. He ain't gotta he said he ain't gotta exercise. He he wanted the convenience of having surgery. I ain't willing to go to that convenience. I'm sorry, I'd rather put the work in. It feels that much better. You feel me? Like you put your money to something. You ain't gonna get no infection lane. from doing no dips. You can get an infection from surgery. Then Kanye uh, Mama die from cosmetic surgery or complicated uh -huh. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. If you're going a lot crazy, of man, that shit better be some shit that's necessary. Like exactly. Like I need this for my everyday life, not just to be cute on Instagram. Active surgery, ain't no shit. You know what? I just want this. Come on, cut, cut me up real quick. It's 
Niggas ain't no need. You feel me? I done like been that. in knife fights. I don't want no knife coming at me just because. Uh-huh. Like you gotta, you gotta coax me out of that shit. It gotta be some heavy duty shit for a knife to be coming this way. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, I was in the well, What is the last two things I have? If this goddamn uh commercial got away, but all right. Speaking of going to prison, working out all that stuff. Um, this woman in Fort Worth, Texas, is charged for throwing her boyfriend's mother's ashes into a lake. Texas woman was arrested and charged with abuse of a corpse two years after she threw her ex-boyfriend's mother's ashes into Lake Wharf, northwest of Fort Worth, authorities say. Uh, Augustine Gladney, 40, dumped the ashes that belonged to 38-year-old Ernest Smith's mother into the lake in 2020 and was charged with the crime on May 4th, according to the Fort Worth police. Um, she That's said this. Wild law. Hmm? I feel I, I like ashes are considered still the corpse. I didn't realize yeah. that. But that's a yeah. shit, man. that lady. The arm. Queen of, she get the Queen of Petty Award, boy. You, you fuck with somebody, mama, man. God, I've man. seen that a few times on. I've seen it a few times online. Like females do that because they know it's it's something very special, very close to the dude. So they they try to do that. Like it's on the side. Mm-hmm. They mentally it's on the same mm-hmm. level for them as messing up a, a dude's pair of Jordans or keying up his car. Oh no, that's my mama. It's a, it's a, exactly, it's a line you cross. You like. It's a sanctity of this. These are the last remaining memory. This this ain't got nothing to do with me. This this is actually the remains of somebody else. It's like you going to dig somebody up and dough or something to the body. And if I'm like, come on, if I'm like, I understand your level of petty and you want to be petty. It's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do to be petty. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of stuff you can be petty. I totally <laughs> understand if anybody who throws somebody's mother's ashes into a river is immediately following those ashes into the river. I totally get it. Like well, I'm not mm-hmm. advocating for nobody to get beat, but I understand. Like, I get it. Like, that's some, that's some other shit. Mm-hmm. Like, Mama Love, you threw Mama Love into the what? Into the <clears throat> what? Oh. This is like uh, burn. I, I don't know how to say this. I don't know how to say this and not get the video taken down. But I'm gonna try my best. Um, I feel like when females get upset at a lot of shit, they try to find the most vindictive and petty and coldest way to get back at a dude. But the you never realizing like I'm trying now. The best way to get at a dude is just stop talking to him. So just move the fuck on. That's that's the most cold that shit early. you can do to. Him. If I'm like, do that. If I'm like, you, you you trying to get get back. That shows you still have feelings. He he winning at the end of the day because you did something to try to get back to him. Or you did this because <laughs> if you didn't care, you wouldn't have did it. So you still care even after you did it. You would think about that that dude. So you know you did something petty and horrible. Now he has no no, no nothing to hold the memory of his mother. You know, like that could have meant something to if he got kids, that could have meant something to his kids or, or whoever in the family. You, I don't know the lineage, but still, it's a line crossed. Mm. You know, if you want to do something to somebody, he do to handle her. your business with that person. You feel know, like handle your business with that person. Too many times, outline people get get hurt, get injured, get involved in dumb shit that don't have nothing to do with them. If you have a problem with somebody, handle your problem with that one person. And if your problem is to the place where you have to get physical, get petty to the place where things are getting picked up, move the fuck on. Don't be toxic. My God damn. It ain't that serious. You was born alone. You going to die alone. Well, uh, to her. Did he what he did? Something? Like, how do you get, what, is she, what was she that mad about that she went to mama? Well, in the viral video that they um, they found with her throwing the ashes into the lake, um, oh, videoed it too. Uh huh. It's a huh. caption that says, "He cheated, so I threw his mom's ashes in the river." I actually have the video. I actually have the video of that shit too. 
So yeah, he cheated. And that's what happened. But um, people, there's other things you can do to get back at a cheating spouse or cheating mate. I mean, you, you don't have to do things that's going to give you a class A misdemeanor. Uh, misdemeanor. I can't even say it. Misdemeanor. Yeah, misdemeanor that carries $40,000 in fines and up to a year in prison. Yeah, you could just. There's going to be a lot of people floating in the river this summer. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, leave folk, leave folk, dead, dead relatives alone. That, that, that don't never. I don't. I don't understand no. people, people these days. I, I be trying to understand people and be trying to like, okay, let me step in the shoes, step in the situation, get some perspective. Right. But a lot of these motherfuckers out here doing wild shit that. Well, get y'all really, really hurt. Really, get y'all really, really, really hurt. And the person who's reactionary is always the one to look like like it's crazy. If dude was there on the scene and he threw her off the bridge with them ashes, he would be the one to look like, oh, you're so crazy. It's domestic. My boy, she threw my mama ashes off over the bridge. Man, I threw her ass away to go kill her. You do something to somebody. When you do some shit to somebody, you can't tell them how to react. Mm-hmm. Repeat that, please. Repeat that, please, for the people. You do something to somebody, you you can't really tell them how to react. Like, you you smack somebody in their face and they shoot you, you kind of, you kind of got to go back to the root of what and set off everything. Like, what was the actual catalyst that initiated the whole chain of events? And if you was the one doing some dumb shit, then, like, there's decisions that can be made at any point, but, like, yeah, don't do no shit like that. Don't fuck with nobody, parents, man. Nobody dead people, especially like people mm-hmm. go crazy about their dead relatives. Like, there's whole wars in Chirac based upon like people disrespecting someone else's dead relative. Like over words, it, over just words. Much less the actual body or the the ashes of the body. Like, nah, chief, you don't do that. You don't mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. She all on days. Oh, she, I hope they don't fuck with her. She losing it. Exactly. Hope she pay all that forty thousand, and I hope she take all that year. <laughs> sit down, folks. Oh. Go sit. Might need to learn a lesson. Yeah. Take a while to think about what you actually did, because if you was to do that to your mom, oh, you would be hard. Facts. Facts. You'd be a monster. Mm-hmm. The exactly. media what if we went to your mama house? What if we went over your mama house and drug her ass out the house and took her ass over the damn bridge? You wouldn't feel too happy. Yep, that'd be pretty like much. People, true. people, people. That's, that's one thing I, I I realize with everyday people. As children, we all taught to treat each other like you want to be treated, but as adults, we don't do that shit. Mm-hmm. You know, At all, know, most motherfuckers don't do that shit. You feel me? Like most motherfuckers don't treat the next one like they want to be treated. Because it's not. The world would be a lot more civilized. A lot more people will speak to each other. A lot more people will be just more friendly. But we ain't. We are. We're. We're cold-hearted people. We're returning to more. On every day, we get more cold. More cold. We don't speak to each other. Walking by, motherfuckers just just go on by their life like robots. Numb to. We got robots. Robots taking over. Robots are taking over. They've already taken over. We're turning into the robots. We we're returning from the warm humans we used to be and friendly people. And everybody waving and being all cold to motherfuckers is isolated into the phone, into whatever you is, messages, is you in your box and you're just moving on with their life. That's the, you, you, we the robots. Fuck, fuck that shit. Always normalize been. speaking to motherfuckers. Normalize saying hi. Normalize speaking to motherfuckers when you go out in public, motherfucker. Don't go out in public and don't speak to somebody. You ain't got to have a long conversation. Hey, how you doing? Boom. Not even how you doing, because that makes all the conversation you don't want to just, hey, Boom, give a head nod. Let's get back to, I remember when head nods was, was, was motherfuckers at least was head nods. Okay, I want you for like, I'll still say what's up, guys. Even though I'm a robot, I don't mind. I got you back. I hate these humans anyway, so yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Either way, everybody been a robot to me. Um, the only other thing I was going to bring up is they finally starting the Nipsey Hussle murder trial, and I'm still like, why is they, why they took three years to do this? But they're starting off getting the selecting jury and everything. 
But other than that, that's the end of the fuckery, y'all. I'm, 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 I'm hmm. that should be pretty cut and dry. That was on camera, exactly. Like we saw you pull up and do everything. Uh, all we should be doing is figuring out what the sentence is, not what we're gonna do. That to you. Kinda... Didn't, didn't he plead not yet? Right. Did he plead not yet? With us? How? That's what I'm saying. I ain't trying to hear that insanity defense shit. Nah, you were saying enough to get you the guns. That's pretty I'm good. up to. When you come you back, I don't want to hear that insanity shit. That means you left, had time to think about it, and then came back, and you ain't acting no moment of passion. Uh-uh. The you moment saying you killed that fucking brother you was with before you came back. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I think that's pretty cut and dry. I don't, we don't need no jury for that. We just need to know how many years we giving them. Are we gonna kill them or not? Like, we'll we, we'll be giving them. That's all it is. So, mm-hmm. Sad to say, but if the government don't do it, when he go to prison, somebody gonna do it. Yeah, especially if they if they put him in prison in California, because them folk love yeah. that. That's a mm-hmm. that's like being in jail. That's like Politics. that's like being in jail for killing Pac right after Pac died. Like, oh, yeah, oh. he did come in solitary. Boy. The mud hole that's gonna get stomped into you, my God! The thing they gonna try to do to you, up the amount of shivs <laughs> that will be sticking out of your body, Jesus Christ! It's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get real dark. Mm-hmm. That's what happens again. You know, you shouldn't have killed somebody. Like you should have. Mm, that's what you deserve. Because I don't. I go through my life every day, and I don't be worrying about nothing. Now that stuff happening to me, because I ain't out here killing nobody. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I don't I'm be going to try to kill people, so. I don't be killing nobody, man. I don't even talk behind nobody back. Like, I keep it real, like, simple. Like, I just try to respect people, you know. Let people be, and usually that, that works out well for me. I feel like somebody <laughs> might do that, though. It's amazing how many haters and beefs and people that, you know, wanted to do harm to me. Amazing how much that stopped when I stopped initiating things. A lot of people need to just do that. Just chill the fuck out. Stop being an asshole. Go to sleep. Don't be a jerk okay. out here. You know, just be nice and stay your ass in the house. That that part too. That that uh-huh. usually helps. some of y'all don't need to be outside. I know a lot of y'all that's the phrase to say we outside, we outside. Some of y'all need to stay your ass oh, inside. Sweet. Before you fucking home. Before your outside ass, go outside. Do something outside that's gonna have you inside for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Like a dude that killed trouble. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He, he should have stayed his ass home. Get trouble. you a TV dinner. Mm-hmm. And, and watch you some porn and went to sleep, nigga. But better I yet, else and find somebody else. Cause now you really ain't gonna get the girl back, or any girl. It might end up being a girl after a while, depending on the prison. This is true. Well, mm-hmm. I, don't they, I don't know if they raping folk no more. Rico Reckless on DJ Vlad said it now. They just spitting in men's ass. I'm gonna be a law-abiding citizen for the rest of my life. I thank God every day. I only made it to the jail level. Me too. Prison, I would have been. I would have been ahead to kill somebody. Like I would have had to kill somebody, like, kill somebody just off GP, just to make sure that. Soon, soon as you go in, just so you, that nigga's oh, crazy. Let me just take somebody the fuck out. Who y'all don't like? <laughs> shit, like I. I mean, shit. That nigga Rico <laughs> Reckless. <represented, laughs> them niggas up in Cook <laughs> County. Niggas up in Cook County. They just knock you the fuck out and then spit in your ass. Like they knock you the fuck out and then they say it's a nigga. Like a nigga would just yell out from one of the tears, get that nigga ass. Like there's there's a chant, uh, there's a whole procedure to this shit. Watch Vlad TV with Rico Regular. But I'm telling you, if you ever want a deterrent to keep you from doing crime, or if you already a criminal and you want and you looking to get out, but you need that extra motivation, watch that shit. If you still want to be a criminal after that shit. Nigga, you deserve to be a kingpin. You you deserve it, cause I, nigga, crime is gay. Crime is very gay. Crime is not the way. 
between that and Mexican mean. got boots, I don't heard enough. <laughs> and and the scene yeah. like, cause jail is one thing. Jail be chill. Jail most of the time be like, hey, you hanging out? It's boring as fuck. Mm-hmm. If that don't get to you, I don't know. I'm an introvert, and I don't even really need a whole lot of space to move around in. But I like to be able to get the fuck up and go piss where I want to go piss without motherfucker being able to see that shit. I like mm-hmm. to be, I like to be able to like, you know what? I don't want to sit in this room no more. I want to go sit in the other room. I like that just little freedom. So for me, being bored was enough to get me. You know what? Jail ain't my thing. I don't like being in here. I ain't coming back. You got working me no more. I see y'all. You won't see me no more. Cause they always, it's always an asshole at the end to be like, hope it don't see you again. You won't, nigga. You won't ever see me again. Unless you are a subscriber to the partner, you will never see this face again, my nigga. You, I got it. It's, it's been the most it, boring it fucking time one. of my life. I've never been this boring. It's always one. It's always nigga. one. Day be like, don't come back. Ain't that ain't enough push up in the world? I wasn't trying to be I'm here. Good. I'm good, nigga. I like being able to sit around and watch what the fuck I want. I, I'm just that type of independent nigga. But if that don't get you, if you know what, I don't mind being bored. I'm built for that shit. I don't mind going in there. Lock me up. I ain't scared. Throw away the key. We go reckless. Watch him give you the grandeurs of being in, the, <laughs> in prison. <laughs> and just imagine yourself being behind bars. And a big nigga named Leroy running up on you and knocking you the fuck out. Not and the only thing you hear as you come to is, get that nigga ass. Nigga, what? <laughs> I'm done. I'm good. Hey, nigga, I'm flushing the brick tonight. Nigga, I don't need to do nothing else. Nigga, what? Oh, yeah, I know I said I was going to hit that lick with y'all. You can count me out, nigga. Let me out the car, though. Hey, doe boy, let me out the car, though. Let me out the car. I need to pull a tray moment right now. This shit is over. My whole is a wrap. Uh, rap. Let uh, Young Thug had to watch that damn interview before. I guarantee you he wouldn't have been on, the, on no wiretaps. Nigga, don't call me about nothing. Ain't no slime over here, nigga. My kids don't even watch Nickelodeon no more, nigga. Mm-mm. Don't call me for nothing, nigga. Right. Nothing. Nigga, nigga, I'm telling you, that shit, I was like, I'm telling you. I wish I had seen that interview when I was like 19. Nigga. Oh, man. I, I would have been on the straight and narrow a whole lot earlier in my life. Nigga, what? They spitting in where? Your ass. I, I don't like when a nigga talking and a little gleek come out and, and catch me somewhere. They they spitting in what? They yelling out what? Nigga, why? Like, like why? the knocking out part, I ain't tripping off that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you in the fighting and boxing and shit, you understand that that's a, that's a normal thing that I can expect to happen. Yeah, knock me out. I don't care, but don't be doing that. I ain't that even shit. tripping off the ship. I already understand. That's a normal thing that could happen. Nigga, what? Mm-hmm. They're spitting in what? They yelling on what and spitting in what? And this nigga was like, they lining up to do it. Like, they lining up and hocking loogies in there. and they, Like, they make it be a presentation. Too bored. They, they <sighs> making it like a tribal ritual. Nigga, what? Oh no, nigga. You can't pay me to sell a nickel bag, nigga. You can't pay me to jaywalk, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I saw this. I was like. I bet y'all niggas stop going on Vlad telling all your damn crimes now. Shit. I bet you don't want to end up in there being one on the receiving end of that shit. Not at all. The last thing you want to hear is. Get his ass! <laughs> nigga, that is the new... Nigga, play that video in schools across America. You have more doctors oh. and lawyers very quickly. Kids all across America be trying to stay away from crime. You won't want to follow NBA young boy then. Uh-uh. Well, NBA young boy didn't tell you his ass was in there guarding his cheeks. Hoping somebody ain't go, get his ass! <laughs> nigga, that's the funniest interview ever, nigga. Y'all gotta go watch that shit. That's they, talk about, they talk about Dookie Glocks and people spitting in folk ass. They shooting dookie glocks in there, y'all. You don't want to know what that is. The, 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 the mixture. <laughs> Whew. 
That's all right. Pause all that shit. I don't even want to oh, know. I, I heard of something a couple of weeks ago. And I forgot to tell you. I looked it up. You ever heard of an Alabama pot pie? That sounds disgusting. That sounds right up Very there. Very much. Dirty so. Sanchez. I don't or, even like pot pie. Or some old, some donkey punch shit. That sounds like some old disgusting <laughs> shit that you find in Urban Dictionary and nowhere else. I don't, I don't think I want to know. It sounds like you eating shit. That sounds like one of them pies from the hell. Like you end up oh, yeah, yeah, all yeah. over your teeth. Yeah. Like, what? What? You ain't eating it. You you ain't eating shit, but it got something to do with it. I ain't even gonna tell you what it is. I let y'all look it up. Matter of fact, while we on here, look it up so I can get a reaction. Oh, Go ahead, look up Alabama. Alabama pot pot pat. I think he just. Did. I don't want to do it. Well, it somebody is- got to do it because I ain't about to do it. I ain't, look, I ain't trying to. I'll, be, I'll do it. I don't want to be the pioneer on this lookup. I don't mind looking up some shit that I kind of know. I'm just making sure to verify, but I ain't trying to be the. This sounds like some two girls in one cup type shit. The variation Hell of no. the Alabama hot pocket. Yeah, Alabama hot pocket. There you go. Yeah, but it's an uh-huh. Alabama hot pocket and it's an Alabama pot pie. And the pot pie is probably hot broken. Pocket. Uh, hot pocket. Hot pocket. Um, shit, dude. She like. Look at Pat's face. Look at Pat's face. Oh, man. Audio only listeners. This might be the week y'all want to switch over to YouTube and come check us out over there. If you ain't never seen us on YouTube and you've only heard it, this might be the week you need to see his face. But his face says it's all about whatever this pot pie or hot pocket or whatever oh, yeah. other type of pastry, this shepherd's pie, whatever the fuck mm-hmm. it is. Mm. Alabama hot pocket. What is it, Pat? Yeah. Is it like yeah. a duke block? The Alabama hot pocket is when you finish... You... F- that is... That is... Sound it out. No, it's not even sounding it out. It's just that disgusting. I don't even want to say the definition of it. It's that disgusting. That's right. It's man, big. I want to. Her leg. You spread her leg wide open and shit in her pussy. <laughs> A long turd. In this definition, they say mom, your mother. So that's how country it is. So that's why I didn't want to say it at first, but. You spread it wide open and you shit in her pussy. And that's the hot pocket. If it's a turd, it's a hot pocket. If it's if what it's diarrhea, woman, it's hot pie. What woman outside of a small village in Tijuana is gonna let you, is gonna lay there and let you <laughs> squat across her cooch? What coot noop in America is about to sit there and spread? Now we now come on. What? I, I, you know, what for what? I'm gonna be honest with y'all, man. There ain't but so many things that from Alabama that uh, has contributed to the culture in the whole, and uh, this ain't one of them. Nigga, have you heard of the type of infections that women get from wiping the wrong way? Can you imagine what that's doing? Mm-hmm. pH balance will never be the same. I was about to say the same thing. I was about to say the <laughs> same your, 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 thing. That woman's flora is going to be fucked up for life. You'll never have good bacteria again. She don't got no pH balance. She got an F balance. It, it ain't a mass and gill <laughs> Her of Eve in the world that's about to offset the damage that that's going to do. Offset. I saw that going a whole lot of ways, but I didn't think you was going to tell me that. Oh, my Jesus. The shit I have learned about on this fucking podcast in two years. Sir. Be surprised. I'm there, man. Hot pocket. Alabama hot pocket. The pot pie worse. Why is everything in Alabama got some crap? Yo. Yeah, I, I think the pot pie is worse, Pat. Who is sitting around doing this shit to come up with? Who's, who? Because that who, means you had to do it a couple of times to come up with a nickname for it. Exactly. Like what? 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 And that was the good and fuckery, y'all. Um, 
<laughs> Learn something new every day. Uh, every week. It's something. Every week is something. Well, folks, um, if you've made it this far on the podcast, I'm going to just go ahead and jump into it. This is the part of the podcast where we uh, start to uh, leave you for the week. Uh, episode 80 is coming to an end. Um, I don't know what kind of a note we just left you on, but praise Jesus to you for listening through that conversation because that got, that went way different. Um, yeah, very much. You never know what's going to happen here on the partners. Um, but if you stuck around this long, then that means something resonated with you enough to where you want to support. So go ahead and do so. If you want to support financially, there's a few ways you can do that. You can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners and you can donate for as little a dollar as a dollar or you can sign up for a membership there for $4.99 and get access to exclusive perks. You can also go to on uh, Spotify. And if you're a listener there, you can support and become a monthly supporter for $4.99. Or you can always donate individually by sending us a cash app at dollar sign partner tiers one. Or you can hit us up on our PayPal at the Partners Podcast at gmail.com. Or I'll tell you an easy way to do that at the end. That's one way, that was, those are the easy ways you can just support financially just to help us out, continue to see us grow, and continue to see us be able to reinvest and to bring you better and better content. And another way you can support is you can actually get some back for your money. Face, how can they do that? Well... You can go get stuff like this hoodie, shirts, bags, beach towels, phone cases, and all those type of goodies. Socks. At rtxrollers.com. Socks, too. I hat. Definitely with the good socks. Definitely with the hats. Bucket hats. Keep the sun out your face, man. I know you those in the summertime. But like I was saying, rtxrollers.com. <laughs> Excuse me. rtxrollers.com. I'll spell it for you. A R. T R E clothing.com. No, I won't spell clothing. I gave it to you once. Clothing.com. Artray clothing.com. You can still, right now, I believe you can still use the promo code, all caps, Pod Squad A3, to save up to 15% on your total purchase. Get that. I'm going to remove that. Use that now. I'm going to remove that. Yeah, I'm going to remove that that promo code uh, midsummer. So I say around July 4th, that promo code will be gone. But I will be promoing another promo code for July 4th and only July 4th, um, the week before July 4th. So tune in for that podcast the week before July 4th. I'll be giving new shit, excuse me, um, new promo codes out. Um, there will be a new line coming up. I just dropped a time over money line um, uh, last month, something like that. Time over money shirts, time over money on apparel out. Uh, check it out. We really need to invest in time over money. So that's a new mm-hmm. thing, time over money. But once again, rtradeclothing.com. Get your summer fits right now. Get your summer fits right now. Get your 4th of July cookout outfit right now. And it's the only place you can get partners merch. So if you want to rep the pod squad, you can't get it nowhere else. So you got to go to rtradeclothing.com. Get you an AC83 fit and a pod squad fit. And then be just killing them out here and stunning on them. And as you stun on them, make sure you remember to send face the pictures of you stunning in your R-Tray or partner's merch so that he can add you to the R-Tray clothing uh, Instagram wall of fame and put you up there so that you can show yeah, and model yeah, and rap. Yes, yeah, sir. Send those pictures in. You never know who's watching, who's looking. So send those pictures in. You're trying to model. Get that R tray on your back. Get that partners on your back. Let me post those pics of you. Hey, you never know. Somebody might pick you up. Be looking for some somebody to model my shit. So, indeed. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Make sure you send those pics in when you get your gear. And then, man, if you just want to, you know, shoot the breeze with us, Pat. How can they reach out to us? How how can people keep in touch with the pot? At sign T H E P O D N A S. That's at sign T H E P O D N A S. And that is the Twitter, that is the Instagram, that's the TikTok, that's all the other social medias. And Tiz, Face, Pat are the partners for Facebook. 
We everywhere. And we Twitch. Googleable. We Googleable. And if you forget everything that we've said, I can't remember what Faye said. Where can I get my gear? What was that at that Pat used? What did he say about Facebook? Where can I donate? Just go to thepartners.com. Make it easy on yourself. It's a one-stop shop for everything partners related. If you are part of the pod squad, then you must have visited thepartners.com. You can go there and reach out to all of our social medias. You can keep in touch with us. You can donate straight from there with a click of a button. You can access all of the clothing, all of the merch right there. You can access our live streams. You can listen to the podcast straight from there watch videos, all of that straight from the website. So go to thepodnas.com. If you can't remember nothing else, remember thepodnas.com. That's T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S.com. And yeah, and when you get there, you'll be seeing these three faces that you've been rocking with this entire time so far. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you joined us as as Face always says. So thank y'all for joining us. And that's who y'all been hanging with. It's been Tears, one third of the partners. And I've been along with the other third of the partners, the Padawan here, and I'm along with Dramatic Pause. That man, it's your boy Face finished the race, but I dropped my mace. I love him. And the triangle has been complete. We see y'all. Thank y'all for kicking. And we gotta do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's become a tradition. If you one of the people. It's only like 10 of y'all that make it all the way to the end of the podcast every week. Y'all know what was coming, motherfuckers. Peace out, bitches. We love y'all. Have a great week. We'll see y'all next week. Hope everybody's well. One, honey. I'm about to get my ass to sleep.